day of shooting, we picked the most difficult set ever. Smoke, mirrors in every direction. Love it. Welcome to Twilight. You're listening to Another Bite of Twilight, a podcast where we look back on our obsession with the Twilight Saga and continue to freak out 10 years later. Hey guys! Hello! Happy Twilight Tuesday. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for... It's a pleasure It's a pleasure to have you on, Kelly. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you on, Melissa. <laughs> Thanks for being here. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you for being here on my show. <laughs> so today we're recording from different states. Kelly's in Vermont mm-hmm. and I'm still in Massachusetts. <laughs> yes, we are long distance today. It's sad. It's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, so thank you guys um, for listening and please forgive our audio if it sounds kind of crappy this week uh soon hopefully we will be back to recording together but yeah i'm spending the month in vermont and i gotta say very twilight vibes here Mm. especially the other day and you were in vermont the other day too yeah but we weren't together (laughs) (laughs) vermont's just the place guys vermont's the place to be (laughs) it's beautiful yeah but oh my gosh i was driving around and it was misty and cloudy and i was driving past these mountains with trees all up them and there were these clouds rolling up the mountain and it really it looked like twilight mm. and i was freaking out yeah it really pe- people I, that i was with was like hey mel this looks like a good time for vampire baseball <laughs> yeah and the town i'm in only has about 3,000 people in it, and it mm. feels like Forks. It'll be interesting to go to Forks and see if it's any similar to Vermont. True. I Well, I did go to Washington. I haven't been to Forks oh, yet, yeah. and I think it does feel a bit similar. It does have more of a Old West feeling, but there's actually some yeah. of that here. Some of the towns yeah. here feel 1800s-ish. That's a lot like where I was in Vermont. They do have, like, Walmart and stuff, but a lot mm-hmm. of convenience stores are just like what do you call those general General store store. yeah very old timey you know people have like wood fire heating and stuff yeah and the apartment i'm in i'm with my friend abby hi abby it's above a (laughs) it's above a hardware store and behind it is a lumber mill so it feels really forksy (laughs) rustic Oh, can I, can I share something horrible about my week? Yes. So, it's not that important, but this other podcast that I listen to that I love so much, it's about the Kardashians. It was called Realizing Stuff. And I, I'm not, like, obsessed with the Kardashians the way I am with Twilight, but it's just comfort for me. It's just kind of mindless, and I, I just get, I find myself getting wrapped up in it. I, you know? Yeah. Forgive me. But <laughs> Mel! <laughs> so they they're my favorite podcast I felt so attached to them and I look forward to them every single Wednesday Mm -hmm. and abruptly they just ended it with no goodbye episode nothing they just made a post on their Instagram saying yeah we're ending it I actually inboxed them something a minute before asking like hey do you guys think North is photoshopped in this picture like something (laughs) stupid and then they didn't respond to it, and then they made, like, a story saying, we're over. They said, like, the podcast is over, and then I responded, what? For real? And they said, yeah, sorry, we're done. And then they just made a post saying that they were ending it so so abruptly. No, it made me so sad because it made me feel like they didn't really, they weren't as invested as the listeners were in the podcast, Mm -hmm. and I just think that's really weird like as a podcast host I feel like we're all in this together not to be cheesy but like I would genuinely like I really care about you guys I would just feel really shady doing something (laughs) like that if that makes sense yeah we will not do that just so you guys know I'm sure those hosts were going through something I looked and they unfollowed each other so I think they got in a fight or something Mm -hmm. and maybe they weren't you know I don't know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs or something. They were so upset about that that they didn't really have the capacity to care. 
because it seems like they lost a friend probably but still yeah. we will not that won't be happening also mel and i are cousins so we can't really escape each other <laughs> <laughs> our moms see each other all the time and it just wouldn't last even if we tried to break yeah. up and yeah mel and i were talking and we decided that well first of all we're not planning on ending this anytime soon so don't worry but if we ever did i was thinking maybe we would never really end it yeah <laughs> like if anything twilight related happened we could come back for that and then maybe disappear again for a little bit this is just way way in the future just to let you guys know that's just yeah just in case a podcast should be like a job i mean even yeah. regardless if you're getting paid for it you should still put in like two weeks notice at the very least because i was completely thrown off guard and i honestly feel like not to be dramatic but i feel like bella and new moon right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally understandable <laughs> <laughs> it, it ruined my whole day it's sad when podcasts end i know i don't know i feel like you guys are all I feel like you guys are our friends, you know, and I, yeah. I just, I would feel so sad just up and leaving like Edward did or something. <laughs> yeah, we love hearing from you guys and especially some people who have written to us several times. I feel like I know you. <laughs> yeah. And I almost yeah. want to meet you, but that feels a little creepy to say <laughs> Yeah, no, we have like a handful of 15 or 20 listeners we talk to on the regular that we just feel like very mm -hmm. connected with on this journey together. Love you guys. So today, what are we doing today, Mel? Today we're discussing Eclipse the Novel. The Novel. Do you guys say Eclipse or Eclipse? That's a good question. I say Eclipse. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> But sometimes I'll say Eclipse. It's really mm. interchangeable. In my neighborhood back home, there was a street called Eclipse Street. And when I first read the Twilight books, I just loved that. And I would ride my bike mm. by that <laughs> sign just to look at it. Because <laughs> it was, I should, should go. Yeah, we should go take no. a picture. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Well, we asked you guys how you felt about the book. And I feel like the answers are pretty varied. Friend of the podcast, Annika, mm -hmm. aka Hey Maven, said Eclipse is my favorite book and movie. I think it's where the romance reaches a fever pitch. I think the last time I read it was March, maybe? Cassia says Eclipse is on the second place after Twilight. I read it three times, I think. Last time was a month ago. Emma says it's my second favorite, and I'm currently rereading it for my tenth time. Wow. So it looks like it's a lot of people's second favorites. Do you think first being Twilight for a lot of them? I I'm assuming. Oh, I guess we don't really know. Could be Breaking Dawn. Could be New Moon. We actually have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, Savannah, Savannah says Eclipse is second after New Moon. My ranking for movies and books has always been New Moon, Eclipse, Breaking Down Part 1, Twilight, and then Breaking Down Part 2, The Order. Death has to do with me being Team Jacob. I had hopes for him in New Moon and Eclipse, even though I knew how things ended. Interesting. Okay. The Scarlet Shredder, Renee. Eclipse is my least favorite book. I think it is the most boring. I read it last in January. Hot take. Thank you, Renee. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like your honesty, I mean. Kaylee says, I think I've read it probably 30 times, but I usually skip the parts about the Collins and Quileute's histories. And if you factor in all the Eclipse fan fiction I've read from E's point of view, the total is probably like 40. Wow. Okay, this makes me feel like a fake fan. <laughs> <laughs> I know, same. I think I've read it like three times. Oh my god! <laughs> but Wait, I, say, I, I want to get to that level, okay? I want to read it yeah. a million times. <laughs> Angel says, I think it's my second favorite book behind Twilight. The drama was good and we actually got a fight. Cough, breaking down, cough. I reread all the books last summer, so it's been about a year since I've read it, and I think I've read it three or four times. It's also so good she's on our level mm -hmm. it's also the book i have signed by stephanie meyer okay i guess so, she's not on our level <laughs> us being below yeah 
So it holds a special place in my heart. I also think the book did a slightly better job of making Jake seem like an option for Bella, whereas in the movies you always know she was going to end up with Edward. And sorry, this is getting long. Love you guys. How are you doing <laughs> today? It has the best backstories in it. Jasper and Rosalie. I think I got everything. Wow. TTS Renaissance. Twilight Saga Renaissance. They have a great page, by the way. Said, I loved it, but I wish they didn't play up the whole love triangle thing, but whatever. Mm. Interesting. Interesting because people love it or don't like it as much because of the love triangle. Yeah. And this was all on Instagram, by the way. If you don't follow us already, if you don't have Instagram, no worries. You can email us if you don't have email. (laughs) (laughs) maybe borrow someone to email us (laughs) and find a way to mail us i don't know (laughs) wait oh i also have a corrections corner corrections corner corrections corner so (laughs) i have been holding some of these that i should have corrected a while ago okay so last episode real quick i kept saying paul when i meant sam (laughs) (laughs) fake fan uh honestly i think it's because we recite that line easy paul so much which is said by sam yeah we do oh you're right oh so a listener on twitter deborah informed us that the reason bella isn't wearing her bracelets in volterra when she's running through the crowd Mm -hmm. is because she removed them to cliff dive and never put them back on which duh i don't know how we didn't put that together yeah i feel like an idiot now yeah um (laughs) Well, she should have gone back and found them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, I feel um, like Bella wouldn't do that. Jacob couldn't grab them. Yeah, Jake. What the heck? <laughs> so also, people have informed us that in that scene in Breaking Down oh, Part 1 yeah. in the beginning, that Bella is wearing joggers. Not sweatpants, not leggings, but joggers. We got a lot of feedback on that and yes again i feel humiliated (laughs) i had never heard of joggers i didn't know what they were i had but i let me just defend myself a little bit i usually think joggers are baggier on top like in the crotch part a little bit like 80s parachute pants but not as dramatic that's what i usually think of joggers as being so like justin bieber yeah yeah. They do make women's kinds too. And so now I'm leaning a little bit more towards thinking they are sweatpants. Mm-hmm. But I had the wrong idea of what sweatpants are in my mind. I always thought sweatpants were more baggy and like athletic. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. gray ones that people wear when they do a sport in high school. I don't mm-hmm. know. So yeah, this was a hugely debated thing. A l- this is probably the biggest debate we've had for any episode. <laughs> End debate about the khaki skirt. Oh, yes. Yeah. Everyone has really good pictures in their head of, like, how they can justify it. But you guys know it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, I should have said this forever ago, but it's been determined that, um, you know, throwback to our Robston episode, that Kristen has the dogs. Mm-hmm. Mm, likely i mean they could still be split in custody but it's uh apparently kristen got to keep them yeah and i think in that episode we were not sure if she's with stella maxwell or not but now it seems like she is right yeah yeah another definition <laughs> poor sarah dinkin she was a hot a hot second there <laughs> just a rebound all right so let's dive into the book okay Wait, first, you have anything about the preface? I, guys, you guys know I love Twilight. You know I love Eclipse. You know I love you both. But <laughs> I always have issues with the prefaces, and they just seem kind of unnecessary to me. And in this preface, I can see that Stephanie is just trying to hype us up just to let us know There's going to be action later in this book. Like, oh, the beginning might seem a little slow to you, but keep reading because there's going to be action. That's basically how the preface reads to me. Yeah. (laughs) And it opens with a Robert Frost poem. I wonder if she doesn't really have anything good for the preface, but because she did it for the previous two books, 
you need that consistency <laughs> and just need something. I thought that too. Because it worked for Twilight, I think. Yeah. But now it just seems a little silly. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So chapter one is called Ultimatum, and it starts with this letter from Jacob mm-hmm. um, where he's crossed out many attempts of what he wants to say to Bella, and they're all very passive-aggressive. I wrote that, very, too. So rude, and it's like, you couldn't get a different piece of paper, Jacob? <laughs> or at least, at the very least, cross it out more. Yeah, just scribble it out yeah. so that you can't read he, it. He put one line through the words. Although I don't like it when people do that either. Yeah, or rip the paper, like rip the top off or something. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Just have a sliver of a piece of paper. (laughs) I think he wanted Bella to read that. Yeah, I agree. Or Meyer just wanted us to read that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, (laughs) probably. Did you see that Carrie commented and was like, I call it artsy? (laughs) Yeah, my friend Carrie thinks it's just artsy. Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> <No>. yeah. Um, <laughs> and then Annika said Jacob's poor. Okay. Yes, he doesn't have much money, but... <laughs> <laughs> I know, that made me feel like a jerk, too. I think it was <laughs> joking around, but... But he could cross it out more. He could really, like, if you don't want someone to see it, you can just overlap. Maybe he doesn't want to waste the ink, though. (laughs) Maybe he should just call (laughs) Bella, then. (laughs) Maybe he should really think it out in his mind before he puts it down. (laughs) You're right. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Write it. Write it in the sand. (laughs) My next note is, on chapter five, Charlie says... Wait, your next... Chapter five. I'm sorry, on page five. Oh. <laughs> so nothing happens, and then chapter five. <laughs> no, my next note is page five. Mm-hmm. Bella says to Charlie, as he's cooking spaghetti, "You're supposed to take the lid off first, Dad. Metal's bad for microwaves." And I'm just thinking, like, he's so old. How did he not get that? I know. Oh, I thought that too. I learned that when I was a little kid, basically. He's helpless. How has he survived life yeah. this long? Well, because Bella hadn't been there. Like, did he, he? I guess he just ate at the diner every night, right? I guess so. He really didn't cook all those years. That's crazy. He never made spaghetti? With yeah, he never put something. He's not even cooking it. He's putting it in the microwave. Yeah. He's never used a jar of sauce. (laughs) (laughs) This is a new low. (laughs) He's helpless. He cannot take care of himself. Yeah, and he's the chief of police. It's kind of crazy. I know. (laughs) He has a gun and he can't take care of himself. (laughs) Yeah. It's literally insane. I like how in this chapter, Charlie wants Bella to have more balance in her life and asks about Mm -hmm. Angela. Of course, he's a little biased and wants her to be with Jacob, but I still like that he is saying that. And as I've said before, it's interesting that Stephanie Meyer knows that her narrator Mm -hmm. has an unbalanced life and it's just that's just the way she is. Yeah, I did think that she was being, in response to Charlie, Bella was being pretty rude and bratty. Yeah, yes, I agree. Um, I think this is where she's like, well, Angela has a boyfriend too. Mm-hmm. Just listen to your dad. She still sees Edward every night, so I don't get why the punishment is such a struggle for her to like not be able to see Edward for a few hours in the afternoon. She says, I still had to endure my punishment without complaining. <laughs> It's not that much of a hardship. You see him literally all night. Yeah, I know. I guess just because she can't leave the house, but she would probably just go to Edward's house. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Edward comes over after dinner in this chapter, and Charlie hates him. And Mm. it's kind of sad, but also, I guess, deserved. Pretty warranted. However, I was thinking about this, though. Like, what do you think it is that he 
feels he can hate Edward for just that because the story was that the Cullens moved away. So like if a kid's family moves away, he doesn't really have a choice. Is it just that he left Bella in the woods? You know what I mean? Like what was he supposed to do if he is just a teenage boy and his family moved away? Like it's not like he did anything really. He just. That's true. Maybe, maybe he thought that. Edward should have attempted long distance. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's not for everybody. But I also think that Charlie, on a smaller level, could relate to Heartbreak because Renee left him. So I almost, I don't think Charlie hates Renee, but I almost feel like he is placing some of that Heartbreak on Edward and mm. just, I don't know, like he... He's just angry that it happened and he needs someone to blame. That's true. But also, uh, because of Edward, Bella had to leave very abruptly, too, in the end of New Moon. And I think that kind of, like, set him over the edge. Yeah, definitely. It just, I guess it just seems like Edward causes trouble. So they're talking about graduation here and, like, they're talking about whether they want to go to college. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, is Edward going to be the Val Victorian? We haven't gotten to that part yet but like does he purposely not (laughs) that's such a good point (gasps) who in the class is smarter than him yeah in the he must be playing dumb somehow but how the hell in the movies did jessica become valedictorian when there are the cullens in her well i'm i'm assuming that she was class president because they give a speech too right yeah yeah, that would make more sense for her to be the class president. Wait, I think she was the. I think she was a valedictorian, actually. It just makes no sense. Like, yeah, Edward should be the valedictorian. Yeah, but I can't imagine him giving a speech. <laughs> and when you're the valedictorian, you get in the newspaper and stuff. So I feel like that's too much publicity. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's a know-it-all, but all those days they miss school, he doesn't bother to. Oh, make up to so it. true. Maybe so true. <laughs> I know, and I doubt that he, like, asks for extensions on papers <laughs> and asks if he can stay after school to retake the test that he missed. But isn't he so charming and attractive that the teachers, at least in the books, the teachers let him get what he wants, kind of? Yeah, kind of. I don't know. This is a mystery. He gets into Dartmouth, so he has to be very, very smart. <laughs> Somebody have- correct us or help us. <laughs> <laughs> I must say who's a valedictorian later on. Yeah, we just don't remember and we haven't finished yet. It's definitely not Edward. No, but it should be. Even even Alice and Jasper, I feel, must be smart. Yeah, I was thinking that... So Edward's talking about how he wants Bella to go to Dartmouth. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of clear that he's going to pay Dartmouth money for her to get in. Bella says, like, I could even get in without some enormous bribe. Or is that part of the loan? The new colon weighing off the library? Ugh, why are we having this discussion again? And I just thought, like, oh, Edward's going to be indicted in that admission scandal. Edward. Ooh, you're right up there with Lori Laughlin. <laughs> did, like, Lori Laughlin, I don't really know the details, did they donate money or did they just bribe them? They just bribed them. Because I feel like there's a difference when you donate money to the school. I feel like it's kind of this, it sucks, but I feel like it's this known thing that when somebody, like, donates money to make a building or something, then yeah, you get in. But it's like a sneakier that is, way. That is true. Less obvious in a way. That's true. That happens all the time. Because then they can't, because the money can't be tracked down to like bribing it's just like no we just donated and then she got in yeah but what if you donated and then they didn't get in yeah i don't know (laughs) on page 19 slash 20 i thought it was kind of funny when charlie's asking where edward's gonna go to college and edward winks at bella which i thought was cute and then he's listing off all these ivy league schools and then says <laughs> and university of alaska <laughs> and bella's like i got in there too yeah and then charlie says something like but oh dark like all these other schools you wouldn't go to university of alaska would you and edward says like oh carl will be happy wherever i go and i don't know it's yeah funny <laughs> 
and he's so casual about it. He's like, oh, Harvard, Dartmouth, <laughs> Princeton, <laughs> <laughs> University of Alaska. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> then there's this part on page 22 where it said, Ed, but Edward was staring pensively out the window. <laughs> And I don't know, it just seemed really moody to me. <laughs> and I liked it. And then I just not, I noted that, um, I just think it's kind of cute that Edward wants her to go to college and use her potential. Unlike Charlie and Jacob, who don't really seem to care, it's very weird to me. Yeah. And I was also wondering, why doesn't Bella just call Jake or just visit him? And I think we, I think I know why. It's just because the vampire werewolf problem. <laughs> but I don't know. The, she could at least call the whole chapter. She's like, oh, I haven't heard from him. And I don't know. Well, she, she is still mad at him about the motorcycle thing here, mm-hmm. but she also misses him. And in this chapter is when Edward is like very anti Jacob. He says, you know it's out of the question for you to be around a werewolf unprotected Bella and it would break the treaty if any of us cross over into their land. Mm -hmm. Do you want us to start a war? Which I thought is a little hypocritical and controlling because Edward knows that he is also dangerous. Yeah. But he's for Bella's safety he's just like it's absolutely not allowed that you see Jacob at all. It is hypocritical, and I was going to talk about this later, but it's a weird situation because I was wondering, it definitely doesn't look good for Edward, and it makes me upset that he is acting this controlling, but I was thinking, like, let's say Bella is dating Jacob. Mm -hmm. Would he be cool with her running off to hang out with her vampire friend who's in love with her? (laughs) Absolutely not. He's not even cool with it now, and she's dating Edward. I was just, like, if the situation was reversed, I think it would be the same. I agree. Also, the fact that they are both in love with her, it's very threatening. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And he can read Jacob's mind, so he knows exactly what Jacob is intending. Mm -hmm. But Bella holds her ground in this chapter, too. On page 34, she says to Edward, Edward says, no werewolves, and she says, I'm not going along with that. I have to see Jacob. But then Edward says, then I'll have to stop you, which is not great. doesn't make Edward look good. <sighs> Edward. We're rooting for you, Edward. Oh. Yeah. We were all rooting for you. <laughs> <laughs> so chapter two is called Evasion. This part is funny because Mike comes back to school mm-hmm. and Bella describes him as looking more like Edward. He oh, yeah. is like going out of his way. <laughs> To look like Edward. (laughs) I always thought that was funny. At school, Alice is being really pushy to make plans now that Bella isn't grounded. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of funny. And then Alice has a vision. And Edward avoids being alone with Bella for the rest of the day so that he won't have to tell her what Alice's vision was. (laughs) He even talks to Mike. And offers to come help with his car on page 41. (laughs) I thought that was so funny. I did not remember that. Mike is like, er, thanks, but I have to get to work maybe some other time. And Edward says, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) Edward, oh, he's trying to make friends. And then Bella's like, what was that about? And he says, just being helpful. Okay, then I thought this was really funny. Alice is just like babbling (laughs) for like a paragraph. I guess because she's nervous. She says, you're really not that good a mechanic, Edward. Maybe you should have Rosalie take a look at it tonight, just so you look good if Mike decides to let you help. You know, not that it wouldn't be fun to watch his face if Rosalie showed up to help, but since Rosalie's supposed to be across the country attending college, I guess that's not the best idea. Too bad. Though I suppose for Mike's car, you'll do. (laughs) It's only within the finer tunings of a good Italian sports car that's out of your depth. And speaking of Italian sports cars that I stole there, you still owe me a yellow Porsche. I don't know that i want to wait for christmas yeah (laughs) and then bella tunes her out (laughs) and alice is nervous because she had a vision about victoria yeah bella's really stressed thinking that edward is hiding something from her but then she kind of forgets for a second because they start making out in her room yeah that's kind of a tool for edward to change the subject (laughs) yeah it was 
a hot scene, but I also was thinking about that. Like, ugh. Yeah. He's just doing this to distract her. And also, Edward blatantly lies to her and says she's been seeing Jasper in a strange place somewhere in the southwest, she thinks, near his former family. But he has no conscious intentions to go back. It got her worried, which is just not even true. Yeah. I think. No, I don't think it is. And then Bella says that she's letting, to us, that she's letting her imagination run wild. And then she says, I needed therapy, which, yeah, I feel like Bella kind of (laughs) does. She does. And again, it's weird that she mentions that. But she actually isn't going crazy here because she's Mm -hmm. right. So, yeah, kind of sucks. Ugh. This is tough because I do still love Edward, but he is, dare I say, gaslighting her here. Yeah. <sighs> that would That would be it, but, but I'm not going to spoil it. Well, I am, and just say that I think that he grows later on. He does. You're right. Edward is also kind of overstepping, I think, by setting up this arrangement that they're going to go to Florida when Bella said that she didn't really want to. And then in front of Charlie, he brings it up and says, oh, we have these two tickets. Let's go this weekend. Even though Bella said no already. And so he just kind of like ignored her. Mm -hmm. And Bella also knew that it would make Charlie very uncomfortable. And he just kind of puts her in an awkward situation. Yeah. (sighs) Not a good chapter for Edward. No. <laughs> ah, Stephanie, why do you do this to me? No. I thought this was crazy, though. When Edward brings it up to Charlie, all he does is he says, Charlie, Edward said in a conversa- conversational tone. And then Bella drops the plate that was in her hand, which I think is a little <laughs> dramatic. Because I think she knew at that point that he was going to stir the pot somehow. Yeah. Um, and then, I think it's later in the book, it'll come up again, but she drops a plate again when she hears something. Uh, like, oh, Bella. People don't really do that usually. Like, they hear something shocking and then they drop a plate. <laughs> I know. It's so weird. Okay, actually, I didn't like this quote from Charlie either. I feel like the men were not behaving well in this chapter. He said, he was telling Bella to hang out with Jake and she was trying to explain that it's complicated and that he wants to be more than friends which is true and Charlie says I know you'll do the right thing you're a good person nice so if I didn't figure out some way to make things right with Jacob then I was a bad person and I was like oh Charlie like that doesn't making things work with Jake doesn't equal being a good person you know yeah like she's Mm -hmm. allowed to see who she wants or not see who she wants. I don't know. Yeah. Especially since Charlie doesn't know the full story. Yeah. And why she says, oh, he wants to be more than friends. And he kind of just ignores that. And that's kind of like later on, not to jump ahead. Charlie isn't that bothered by the fact that Jacob kissed Bella like without her consent. Mm-hmm. He's kind of like rooting for Jacob in that moment. Mm-hmm. I don't think that Charlie always has Bella's best interest at heart. Mm. But he tries. He tries. He tries. <laughs> we still like him. Yeah. But everyone messes up in this. Everyone messes up in life, too. I do think I like movie Charlie better than book Charlie. Yeah. Billy Burke just delivers a really charismatic version of this character. Whereas in the book, mm. in the book, I don't love Charlie. Yeah. He's just kind of the dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Charlie is, like, very against the idea of Edward and Bella going to Jacksonville at first, and he says, this is my house, you follow my rules. And Bella says, if that's how you want it, do you want me to move out tonight, or can I have a few days to pack? I know. She's just, like, she didn't want to upset Charlie, but now that he is upset, she's really fighting against him. Mm -hmm. Being very stubborn. That upset me. Yeah, poor Charlie. Page 58. I thought that this sex talk, it's funny, it's awkward, it's relatable for some people. I never had one, but um, <laughs> it it's a clever way to introduce the topic of sex yeah. into the series because before this, it hasn't really come up that much, and it's going to be a big theme in the story um, for the next two books. 
It was clever. Because then after this, she's thinking about it more. It's even more cringeworthy than the movie, I think. Mm -hmm. She's like, I really wish you were not forcing me to say this out loud, Dad. Really. But I am a virgin, and I have no immediate plans to change that status. (laughs) And it keeps going. Like, in the movie, that's kind of the end of the conversation. But she's like, can I go to bed now, please? In a minute, he said... Oh, please, Dad, I'm begging you. (laughs) The embarrassing part's over, I promise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then it ends with her leaving to go to La Poche, but Edward hijacked (laughs) the engine in her car. (laughs) Oh! Which is not good. Making it really hard to be Team Jacob. I mean, Team Edward right now, Edward. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about that? I think it's really controlling and, like, borders on abusive. Which is painful for me to say because I love him so much. But I think he had good intentions, but it's just not the right way to go about it. Mm-hmm. You can't control anybody. Yeah, that's true. Even if you think you know what's best for them, you can't, you can't tell them what to do. Yeah. But then... She's really mad at Edward, and he says, shut your window if you don't want me to stay away tonight. And she looks at the window, but then she sighs, and she opens it wide. She says, then I sighed and opened the window as wide as it would go. So even though she's mad at Edward, she still makes it clear that she's not that mad. Mm -hmm. I feel like I would have maybe kept the window shut for one night. (laughs) Me too. Just to teach him a lesson. (laughs) Yeah, me too. But, oh well. <laughs> she doesn't play those games. <laughs> I guess not. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you have to, you really have to, though. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Love is game. Love is literally a game. It's a game that it's, people play, and it, it really is. And I, <laughs> I don't like believing that. Like, I like to believe it's wholesome when it's real, but it's, it's not. It's, no matter what, it's always a game. Because there's always, like, a psychological aspect and of like validation and like (laughs) even if you're fighting it's a game because you want to believe that you're right yeah i don't know (laughs) i don't i don't know i don't know anything (laughs) yes you do so chapter three is called motives so bella goes to visit her mom in florida Mm -hmm. floride and Renee is on to Bella about her relationship with Edward. Yes. And again, we have the book being a little self-aware about the nature of their relationship. And her mom's kind of concerned that they're too close or too intense. Yeah, she says the thing about magnets. Yeah, that they when one of them moves, the other moves. But then Bella kind of gaslights her mom <laughs> mm-hmm. and says... Don't tell me, I teased, forcing a smile. You're reading mysteries again, aren't you? Or is it sci-fi this time? Yeah. And her mom blushes and says, that's besides the point. Found anything good? And her mom basically admits she's reading sci-fi. And then Bella says, you should stick to romance, mom. You know how you freak yourself out. And then her mom gives in and is like, I'm being silly, aren't I? But actually, no, her mom was right. And Bella, yeah. Bella just manipulated her mom. <laughs> I don't get <laughs> Renee doesn't have to know the whole nature of their relationship that he's a vampire and yada yada to still have a valuable observation to share with Bella and I feel like I don't know why she totally blocks that out like she could have taken it to heart but she's so defensive about it yeah I know like she she could have listened to that and been like oh maybe you're right maybe I should do other stuff maybe this is a little bit too controlling and Mm-hmm. Which leads me to believe that part of her believes it's true because if she if she didn't, then she wouldn't have changed the subject so quickly. Hmm. So maybe all of this is actually kind of fueling the love triangle. Yeah, maybe. Right now we're setting up uncertainty about Edward and mm-hmm. how great this really is. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Even though Jacob is just as controlling. <laughs> But but she's not as she doesn't have the same dynamic with Jacob as she does with Edward where it's it's almost a little bit too intense with Edward for her and Jacob is a little bit more casual, less stress sometimes. 
when she, when he's yeah. her Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes not her Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was, despite the fact that I am a little bit angry with Edward, I thought it was cute when they return home. He says, we're home, sleeping beauty, time to awake. It's like, oh, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> Earlier in this chapter, Bella's thinking about the sex talk she had with Charlie, and she says something about how, she says, I'd been the one giving her, meaning Renee, that lecture time and time again in the last 10 years. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. What? Bella, you were eight and giving your mom the sex talk? <laughs> was what Renee, was Renee? <laughs> she have guys over the morning after every day? Or yeah. <laughs> Which, like, mom, be safe, please. <laughs> Mom, Take your pill, <laughs> mom. <laughs> yeah, what the heck is that supposed to mean? Mom, use a condom, please. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised that Renee, if she was so floozy that she hasn't <laughs> gone pregnant more times. I was just going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> So floozy. <laughs> I feel like Bella really should have siblings just by Renee's <laughs> track track record. Mm-hmm. And the thong in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because Be- clearly if Bella, her eight-year-old daughter, has to give her the sex talk, <laughs> that Renee is a little bit careless when it comes to this kind of thing. Yeah. Clearly she needs to be told. <laughs> about safe sex <laughs> bella loves her mom but also kind of thinks lowly of her do you get that feeling yeah she doesn't have a lot of respect for her <laughs> which i feel a little bit bad for renee about like just because renee is a little bit eccentric or whatever doesn't mean she's dumb i mean she seems like a perceptive lady she just has a lot of interests and doesn't really like to focus on just one thing and It's not bad, per se. It's just different. Yeah, I wonder how much that's, like, Renee is out there and uh, irresponsible and how much of it is, like, Bella being, like, kind of embarrassed by her mom. Mm, Maybe. The way kids usually are. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So Jacob calls in this scene when they get back because he heard that Bella went to Jacksonville and he doesn't really have anything to say. He just says, like, are you going to be in school tomorrow? And she says, yes. And he says, okay, bye. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Because he wants to show up. Because he wants to see if she's human. Yeah. And then I thought, this is funny. Immediately after that, Bella's telling Edward, I think think he was checking checking to make sure that I'm human, I mean. And then Mm -hmm. (laughs) she's getting kind of upset about it. And... Edward and Bella start hugging really intensely. <laughs> and then Charlie walks in and goes, ahem. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so then when they're at school and Jacob shows up, you know, they're really thrown off. Mm-hmm. And Edward says, you could have called us in a steel hard voice. Sorry, Jacob answered, his face twisting into a sneer. I don't have any leeches on my <laughs> speed dial. And then Edward is so savage. He says, you could have reached me at Bella's house of course i know <laughs> so slick so savage and then jacob's jaw flexed and his brow <laughs> pulled together he didn't answer <laughs> edward so then this is re- when it's revealed about edward lying to bella because mm-hmm. jacob mentions how like oh if you if you ever get on our land again and bella's like what she has no idea what he's talking about And she realizes that the Cullens were chasing Victoria and Emmett accidentally got into the Quileute's land and that's what Edward was covering up with the ship. Mm -hmm. And Belle's pretty mad about that, understandably. Mm -hmm. Jay is being a real dick here, though. He's purposely thinking about things to upset Edward. Oh, yeah. Um, We don't find this out till later, but he's thinking about how heartbroken Bella was and... It's giving him a lot of joy doing this, which I think is just, like, kind of exploiting Bella's most hurtful times for his own. Like, even if that's hurting Edward, which is a cruel thing to do, Mm -hmm. Jacob thinking about those things should be too painful for himself, too. You know? Like, he shouldn't be using 
that as a weapon. But again, he's playing the game. He's yeah. He's doing what he has to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to get the girl he loves. So then a teacher comes over because Jacob looks really threatening to, and like all the other kids are watching. Mm-hmm. And then the teacher threatens to call the police. And it's Bella writes, Jacob's little smirk became a full blown grin and i knew he was picturing charlie showing up to arrest him which i thought was funny like could you imagine if they did call the police and charlie just shows up that would have been kind of cool yeah (laughs) the teacher says mr cullen i expect you to ask your friend to refrain from trespassing again and then edward says he's no friend of mine mr green (laughs) but i'll pass along the warning (laughs) savage again mr cullen i (laughs) see it's in the next Scene. They are passing notes while Mr. Barry recites a frost poem, um, and it shows us their handwriting. Edwards is perfect cursive, very fancy. Mm-hmm. Bella's is a little more curly, and it's not bad, but it's not great. Yeah, and I think it's cute that they're passing notes back and forth. He tells her the whole story about what happened this weekend, and then they kind of mm-hmm. start making jokes. It was very cute, but also she forgave him too easily, I think. By the end of the chapter, by the end of the note passing, she's over it and fine with the lying and stuff, which is just a little crazy. Yeah. I mean, Bella doesn't, even against Jacob, Bella doesn't hold any grudges, really. Yeah, she doesn't. Which sometimes she should. (laughs) Well, what's that girl? She hates Lauren. She holds grudges against her. She does have a grudge against her, yeah. Which, Lauren hasn't done much to you compared to some yeah. other Yeah. <laughs> I know. Then, but, or Rosalie. She, like, true. she's so forgiving of Rosalie. Like, she's so quick to be like, everything's fine, Rosalie. Yeah, I know. I would definitely just, have a grudge. At the end of the chapter, Bella overhears the boys, like, Mike, Tyler, Ben, Austin. I feel like we've never talked mm-hmm. about Austin, but... <laughs> Yeah. He's just a kid. They're betting on Edward versus Jacob, mm-hmm. who would win in a fight. And Mike bets on Jacob, by the way. Our boy Mike. Yeah, he says Jacob. And then he um, Edward. Austin says, hey, do you guys know what it was about? That might affect the odds. And they're like, no, no, I don't. Mike goes, I still say Jacob. <laughs> he muttered under his breath. <laughs> <laughs> he hates Edward. Which is funny because he also kind of hates Jacob too. Yeah, you're right. From the movie. <sighs> so that's the end of chapter three. Chapter four is called Nature. I wrote that Bella's being pretty needy here. She said, I would never admit to him how hard it was for me when he was gone, how it brought back the abandonment nightmares. If he knew that, it would make him feel horrible and he would be afraid to ever leave me even for the most necessary reasons hmm. he just like goes for like a hunting thing which is probably what at most a few hours yeah um sometimes i think it's a day or night but yeah yeah i wish that she was more comfortable on her own mm-hmm. but so he leaves a cute note though he says i'll be back so soon you won't have time to miss me Look after my heart. I've left it with you. That is cute. <laughs> like, oh my god. Kill me. I remember in middle school, my friend and I wrote all of our favorite Twilight quotes on a whiteboard, and we wrote that one. <laughs> oh, gosh. This is just right before this. I, I thought this was weird. All of the Cullens are basically telling Bella there's no danger, there's no need to worry about Victoria, and Just the way this was phrased felt like a children's book or something. It was, Carlisle had said, there are seven of us, Bella, blah, 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 blah. Esme had said, would never allow anything to happen to you, sweetheart, blah, 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 blah. Emmett had said, blah, 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 blah. Rosie had glared at him. Alice had rolled her eyes at me. She just runs down the whole family. Yeah, that is weird. Jasper had silently erased all the panic. I mean, it's it's interesting we got all their reactions, but the way it was phrased was... (laughs) yeah strange to me no that is like a picture book <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. has anyone ever made this into like a visual book yeah well they're the um they made it into a graphic novel remember oh but what about like a big children's version of that <laughs> redacted version i don't think so but maybe it's a little too mature for children i don't know yeah probably <laughs> Although I I would say maybe I I would say realistically not. I think 
kids could probably handle it, but it doesn't seem like the type of thing parents would want to give their kids. I would. Yeah, I would. (laughs) I'm going to read my kids this at their bedside. (laughs) Me too, when they're four. (laughs) No, I... Some of our listeners got into it when they were four. Yeah, that's why I say, old. like, I do think kids yeah. can handle it. It's just. Yeah. Maybe not the sex part. <laughs> well, what, how do they cut that out? Uh, What's the point? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> They're very PG about sex in here anyway. PG-13. Would you guys let your kids read this? Let us know. So Bella goes to work at newton's store but she's let mm-hmm. out early because they don't really need her and she sees a flyer that says save the olympic wolf on it and on a whim she books it to la push yeah and when she gets there it's very dramatic it feels like nicholas sparks or something mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> i heard him gasp bella hey jake bella and they like run towards each other yeah 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 and i said i in this scene i can see how people could ship it and think it's romantic it's on page 100 where did what do those posters mean i don't know must have been unrelated but somebody trying to save the normal wolves who are endangered yeah i did skip a part where it's kind of dumb i thought she was killing time and trying to force magnets on her fridge together yeah i thought that did that have anything to do with how renee said that edward and her like magnets i thought it was about edward and jacob and how they wouldn't get along and she's trying to force them together and in fact it was a little bit too on the nose to me and i was getting annoyed i was like okay i don't need this metaphor i get it yeah yeah no but i thought it was almost like like, they're, like, the anti-magnets or something. Yeah, you know? exactly, because they wouldn't, they could not be next to each other. There was, like, a force yeah. that separated them. That, that was a few paragraphs we had of that. <laughs> but, yeah, so now she's at La Push. And Jacob asks if she's forgiven Edward yet, and she says there's nothing to forgive. Jacob's face puckered up like he just licked a lemon. I wish Sam had taken a picture when he found you that night last September. It would be Exhibit A. And then Bella says, nobody's on trial. And he said, maybe somebody should be. I just think that's, like, again, like, so <laughs> low of Jacob to be using her lowest moment yeah. as a gain for him. I totally agree. I don't, it's just shitty that he's even bringing it up, to be honest. Like, you could say, like, Bella, like, you were really hurt last time. I don't want you to get hurt again. Yeah. He's just using it in such a, I don't know, judgmental way. Yeah, that's... That's the way a real friend would say it. Like, I'm concerned. Instead, he's provoking her and his language is... So aggressive. I felt like during this chapter, her whole time with Jacob, she's being very affectionate and, like, really showing how happy she is to see him, which is okay, but I felt like she's being kind of inappropriate in a way yeah i did too. she is acting like she's having an affair in a way yeah she knows jacob has feelings for her and i don't know it just felt weird to me that she like snuck away and i know it's i know it's because edward doesn't approve and that's her friend but mm-hmm. i don't know if i would want to even hang out with somebody who hates my boyfriend and wants to be with me and i don't know i just i don't get this friendship Jacob is, like, she knows that Jacob is very heartbroken about her, Mm -hmm. and she says this at the end of the chapter, this is why I was here. This was why I would take whatever reception waited for me when I got back, because underneath all the anger and the sarcasm, Jacob was in pain. Right now, it was very clear in his eyes. I didn't know how to help him, but I knew I had to try. It was more than I owed him. It was because his pain hurt me too. Jacob had become a part of me and there was no changing that now. But like the reason that Be- Jacob is in pain is because of Bella. Yeah. She has to accept that she cannot help him. The, actually, the way to help him is to give him space. It is. Tr- yeah, it's true. Her coming here and like being all affectionate is only going to make it worse for him. Yeah. And... It's, it's a quick fix in the moment, but in the long run, it's not. And I, I believe this. The people who hurt you cannot heal you. I wrote so that, Jake, too. Yeah. Jacob cannot get better with her there. And also, like, this is something that I struggle with, too. But 
in life, you always have to disappoint someone and you just have to mm-hmm. choose who it's going to be. I mean, if you want to live the life that you want, you always have to let some people down, whether it's like yeah. quitting a job that you feel bad about or moving out of an apartment with friends you like. Like sometimes you have to let people down and mm-hmm. she needs to learn that. And I also felt like she's being a little selfish here. Like she wants him to like her. Yeah. Yeah. She because she doesn't want to lose him. the idea of him being mad at her or like not being friends with her and this is kind of a time where it's really sad like I get it it's very sad to lose somebody but she kind of just has to accept that maybe she deserves to be lost in this situation not because she's bad but just because it's complicated this kind of goes back to how Bella doesn't really have to sacrifice enough in this universe When she really should, like, especially with becoming a vampire and she doesn't really lose Jacob even in the end. And, like, she kind of gets everything that she wants. She still gets a baby. (laughs) Like, she even gets to have a relationship with Charlie and, like, maybe Renee later down the line. I don't know. She she should have some more loss. Yeah. Well, here we see, like, the two sides of Jacob again. She keeps saying that, like, when he's nice and then Mm -hmm. when he's not. And I thought he was being super annoying on page 110. He basically implies that she's dating Edward because he's rich and attractive, which, I mean, maybe to Jacob's defense, I can see why you would think that, I guess. And then Bella Mm -hmm. says, I love him, not just because he's beautiful or because he's rich. I'd much rather he weren't either one. It would even out the gap between us just a little bit because he'd still be the most loving and unselfish and brilliant and decent person I've ever met. Of course I love him. How hard is that to understand? It's impossible to understand. So they go back and forth bickering. Yeah. And then at the very end of the chapter, he says, I feel human. I don't know. And she says, oh, Jake, I whispered, reaching for his hand. I'm like, Bella, you're leading him on. Yeah. Why are you saying that? Oh, Jake. Also, I I was just kind of fed up with just how hateful Jacob is towards Edward in this chapter. And just how hateful the wolves are in general. Like, (laughs) Jacob says how Sam is disappointed in Bella because he says he thought you were the one person in the world with as much reason to hate the clones as he does. Sam sort of feels betrayed that you would just let them back into your life like they never hurt you. And it's just like Sam betrayed Bella. Yeah. Yeah. They don't even have a relationship to be betrayed about. Yeah. And it's just it's just so hateful. Like they don't even know the Cullens and I'm over it. Obviously, the Collins are fine if they haven't killed any humans. Like, you guys know this. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. They don't trust it. <laughs> so, chapter five is called Imprint. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Which, we already know what that's going to be about. I... <laughs> so, we know it's going to be about imprinting. Mm-hmm. But I just had a note. I said, wouldn't it be cool if right now Jacob imprinted on a random girl? <laughs> Oh, my God. That would <laughs> fix everything. That would be funny. <laughs> Just like, oh, sorry, Bella. I imprinted <laughs> on the lady at the grocery store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, Bella. I re- imprinted on Mike's mom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is new in. Yes. <laughs> Lauren. <laughs> yeah, Lauren. Who else? Renee. Uh, Renee. Oh, my God. You know Renee would go for it. (laughs) She would. I felt like Bella, once again, is being too flirty here. Me too. On page 118, she says, He was so close I could feel his warm breath. I reached up so casually to take his hand away and free my face, but wound my fingers through his so that he wouldn't hurt his fe- so that I wouldn't hurt his feelings. He smiled and leaned back, undeceived by my attempt at nonchalance. Because he ha- was holding her face in his hand, but like just running much. your fingers through his is just as flirty and suggestive. She's cheating. Yeah, <laughs> emotionally. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much. Yeah. So Jacob's telling her about the wolves. And explains the story about Sam imprinting on Emily when he was dating Leah. Yeah, I didn't realize that Leah and, and Emily were cousins. I forgot that. Scandal. How, how would you feel if I ended up with 
someone that you loved? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would be hurt by that for sure. Yeah. What about you? I'd be shocked. I'd be, yeah, I'd feel betrayed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but Leah's pretty strong about it. She's actually going to be a bridesmaid in the wedding. That's nuts. Yeah. Oof. Wow. That's hard. But, like, it's interesting because Jacob explains that as the reason why Sam hates the Cullens so much. And it's, like, because when the Cullens came, that's when he phased Mm -hmm. and that's when he imprinted. Mm -hmm. But I don't really understand that because he did find Emily for that reason. Yeah, yeah. was, wouldn't he be kind of thankful for the Cullens? I know. Because of that? He's like, oh, you broke up my relationship. Yeah, you hurt Leah. But, like, <laughs> isn't he happy that it worked out that way? Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. That seems like misdirected anger. Yeah, like trying to put his guilt on someone else. Yeah. I, I gotta say, I don't like this Emily stuff for the imprinting. Ugh. Oh, no, no, no. Me neither. It's not good it's it's even because i used to think that the women reciprocated the feelings Mm -hmm. bella says how did emily deal with this if she was so close to leah and he says she was real angry in the beginning but it's hard to resist the level of commitment and adoration i wrote in my notes um no in capital letters like yeah yes you can resist commitment and adoration i would be I don't know. I feel like you need to be attracted to and like the person. You can't just have someone show up and be really committed and adoring you and be like, okay. Yeah, exactly. No. It's that like, turns me off. Yeah. It's like he's guilting her into it. Yeah. I don't know. To me, that's less attractive. If someone's very, very persistent and can't take no for an answer, I, I don't care. Like, even if you're the hottest guy in the world, I'll think that, like, that desperation is really unattractive. Yeah. I didn't. I wish that the women kind of imprinted back. Yeah. I don't get why they don't. It, ugh, it makes it really uncomfortable for me. On page 119, I wrote, Grow up, Jacob. But I can't remember what part I was talking about. Oh, Bella says it. Jacob says, You think I should be as forgiving as you are about the Collins? We can't all be mm-hmm. saints and martyrs. Grow up, Jacob, Bella says. I was like, yes. And earlier in the chapter, she said to him... I think talking about Edward, she said, at least he can be a grown-up about this. Which is a little unfair, because Edward is a grown-up, technically. (laughs) True. That's the age-old question, though. Do they, are they stuck as teenagers, or, or, I mean, Edward does seem, like, old, so. Yeah. I think that answers the question. And also, Jacob reveals to Bella that he isn't aging while he's a werewolf, which is kind of dumb, I don't like it. (laughs) Also, how does he know that? Because it's not like much time has passed. True. Well, 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 it comes out later during the Quileute Legends story, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bella freaks out. She's like, you are not aging. I growled through my teeth. She freaks out. Damn it. What kind of world is this? Where's the justice? She says, shut up, Jacob. Just shut up. This is so unfair. (laughs) Yeah, she's so upset about this. I just had a little more to say about the imprinting. And just how fucked up it is that Mm -hmm. Sam transformed and hurt Emily. Mm -hmm. Sam was so upset about it that Emily teared him up. And then that's, like, when they fell in love. I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, she she gets, like, beaten up by him, cheers him up, and then they end up together. I'm like, this is nuts. Yeah, because she feels so guilty for how guilty he feels. (laughs) It is. And then Jacob's talking about <laughs> how Jared imprinted on a girl named Kim. And mm-hmm. the story really implies that Kim is not very pretty and that she's kind of lame. And Jacob talks about like, oh, she used to write Jared's name in her notebook and had a huge crush. And Bella says, some soulmate. On page 125 about Jared basically being like, why mm-hmm. would he shit on Kim this way? And yeah. Then Jake's like, no, he can't help it. We read his thoughts. But still, it seems like the pack thinks yeah. Kim is not as hot as him or something. And Yeah. Oh, and it's it's so sexist. That it's like, oh, she's lucky. Yeah. Like, that he imprinted on her. That's basically how it was. 
Yeah. As a teenage girl, she has this big crush on him. How do you know she's always going to feel that way? <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't I didn't like that. I don't know why I wrote this, but I wrote sometimes Bella is a little slow. <laughs> mhm. Yeah. Just with just getting things, I don't know. Yeah, she always assumes like something way off too <laughs> when she's like what were you thinking about that upset edward and jacob's like you me what about me i'm like obviously i don't know yeah <laughs> what, what do you think he was thinking about <laughs> and i wrote in my notes she forgives jacob like five times recently it's getting old yeah and then jacob criticizes edward for hunting and that weirded me out because i was like doesn't i'm guessing the wolves hunt when they're in wolf form or at least sam did because apparently sam was a wolf for like two weeks or something and it's not like jacob's a vegetarian so i don't know why he yeah. is like judging him for hunting yeah animals. bella says i'll come back the next time he's away away jacob rolled his eyes that's a nice way to describe what he's doing <laughs> disgusting parasite <laughs> yeah no i mean jacob's own dad hunts all the time with charlie what <laughs> How different is that? I don't get it. <laughs> Very frustrating chapter. <laughs> yes. A lot of this can be frustrating. <laughs> but it's still fun. Yeah. <laughs> so the next chapter is chapter six, Switzerland. Yeah, this part is also not a great Edward part. Um, yeah, I remember we mentioned this in our feminism episode in the beginning. Yeah, so Bella is leaving La Push and... Edward is kind of on her tail. Yeah. And she says, came out of nowhere. One minute there was nothing but bright highway in my rearview mirror. The next minute the sun was glinting off a silver Volvo on my tail. Ah, crap, I whimpered. <laughs> and then she says, It's like a the cop. Volvo followed. Yeah, she says, The Volvo followed inches behind me. I kept my eyes on the road ahead. He followed me until I pulled to the curb in front of the Weber's house. He didn't stop, and I didn't look up as he passed. I didn't want to see the expression on his face. I ran up the short concrete walk to Angel's door as soon as he was out of sight. She's kind of creepy. Yeah, and she seems scared to face him. And Yeah. It's not a good look. It's pretty stalkery. Edward. Oh, both. I will say Edward is probably behaving worse, but all the guys are behaving horribly in this yeah. book so far. Yeah, even Charlie. Yeah. Even, oh, even Angela's fucking boyfriend, Ben. Oh, uh, he's not that bad, but he doesn't help her with those invitations. Yeah, the announcements. For, yeah, for her graduation. And then he, like, really wants her to see this movie. Okay, that's not bad. But then he's, like, he comes back very soon after. Mm -hmm. I guess it's not bad, but it, it seemed almost like another codependent relationship. Like, why is he coming back later again in the night? He's not bad. Actually, I'll give him a pass. No, but it is a bit much. And Bella did say, like, oh, Angela has a boyfriend, too. Like, implying that they spent yeah. all their time together. Yeah. yeah, I just don't get what's going on here. Ben and Angela are going to U Washington. I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. And while Bella's helping her write these invitations, Angela says, well, Bella starts telling her a little bit about her problem because she seems anxious. And Angela says, Edward must be jealous of Jacob. Which is kind of true in a way. It's just a simplified human version to see it. Yeah, and again, Bella being a little slow, like, didn't, realize yeah. that <laughs> yeah she's like jealous no he's not jealous <laughs> what like she doesn't even see it as a possibility yeah. and then she tells angela about her plans to go to university of alaska and i just thought it was so sweet and sad angela says mm. it's so far i'll miss you and bella's like is it bad of me to you know start becoming close with angela and knowing i'm gonna leave mm -hmm. i i feel like i don't know that is tough but i don't think it's better to push her away and have no friends yeah, i don't know i agree mm -hmm. bella and edward they're fighting in this chapter about jacob mm -hmm. and then bella because of angela she's asks edward if it's because he's jealous and he denies it and he says it's only about bella's safety but then it's interesting because in this moment he doesn't say he's jealous but then later on he's way more understanding of bella wanting to have a relationship with jacob and he's okay with it 
so and he's like i've decided that like you know what's safe for you and like you know what's best yeah so i almost think that like he thought about this later and was like maybe i am being jealous yeah and he realized that that's not attractive i thought his response was weird because she says i mean you know better than to be jealous right he raised one eyebrow do i be serious and then he says easily there's nothing remotely humorous about this i don't get that is he saying he's jealous or is he saying he's not i don't know he doesn't say he's jealous but then he like backtracks he yeah. kind of hints at the fact that he might be but then he backtracks and says no it's just about your safety yeah because she's like you know you shouldn't you know you don't need to be jealous and he's like do i know that he's playing the game <laughs> he's playing it he's not he's not giving up so easily <laughs> yeah edward goes hunting right Mm-hmm. yeah and alice picks her up from work for a slumber party yeah so bella was she was gonna see jacob mm-hmm. and she calls it kidnapping mm-hmm. it is kind of kidnapping yeah it is there's no way she could escape alice yeah i thought it was interesting that the all the guy vampires the guy vamps are going hiking in northern california it's pretty far yeah. away. I forgot that California was ever even mentioned in these books. So I know. It's interesting. It's weird that Edward bribed Alice by buying her the Porsche, the same Porsche from Italy. Yeah. Because, like, couldn't Alice just buy that herself? Yeah. I think, I think they like to d- use gifts and play games with each other. <laughs> She's like, he's going to return it, Bella. He's going to return <laughs> it. Like... Yeah, then you could buy a different one. You play the stock market True. all the time. Or, or play the lottery all the time. And True. I think she does the stock market, too, yeah. Yeah. And when she's at the Collins house for the sleepover, she calls Jacob, and it makes it... Oh, this is really bad. It makes it sound like Edward is her dad and grounded her or something. Yeah. She says on page 148, I'm kind of being held prisoner. And they're, like, joking about it, but, oh, like that's your boyfriend. I don't know. I don't like it. Yeah. And also, if she wants them to get along she shouldn't like she shouldn't tell jacob that about edward yeah. he's only gonna make him hate her, him more yeah what is her strategy here what is she she's, doing yeah she's giving him fuel <laughs> it's very weird and, and that's kind of like i don't know sometimes when you have relationship problems like that you should just kind of keep it keep it yourself yeah i agree so she leaves edward a voicemail and she says you are in trouble enormous trouble angry grizzly bears are going to look tame next to what is waiting for you at home oh, that's Ooh. kind of funny yeah it's funny thinking of edward like listening to his voice <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> and uh bella sees that there's a bed in oh, yeah. edward's room but she doesn't sleep on it she sleeps on the couch still yeah she's being stubborn so she's going to bed she's lying there and then Rosalie knocks on the door. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. And says, can I come in? And that's how the chapter ends. Things are about to get <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yep. Not really. <laughs> so this is chapter seven. Unhappy ending. So much for my... What is it? The Avril Lavigne So song? much for my happy ending. Ending. <laughs> I might be wrong, but I think that song... Like, you know in the Illustrated Guide how Stephanie says songs that inspired each chapter? Yeah. I think that song might be one of them. Really? I, at least one Avril Lavigne song is on there for one book, but I don't know what song it is. Oh my gosh. So this chapter, Rosalie tells her backstory. It's interesting how Rosalie, even in her past life, was very spoiled. Yes. And she just was very privileged. Like, she says that she was raised to believe that poor people during the Great Depression brought their poorness on themselves, kind of like knew she was more beautiful than everybody else, was very aware of how people watched her, yeah. and was just very, very uh, confident in herself mm-hmm. and shallow. Mm-hmm. And she said that she had everything except the one thing she wanted was to be married and have kids. And then she was engaged to this rich bachelor, Royce King. And then uh, she was really happy about that and even pitied her friend, who was married to a poor guy. She's quite a jerk back then and still kind of is, but... Yeah. And she gets into the sad part about how one night Royce was drunk with his friends and they, like, attacked her, basically, and left her to die. I feel like they could have raped her, too. I think they did, but I was wondering... I just don't really get it. Like, why would Royce rape and kill his fiancée? 
it seemed random and was it just like an act i mean not an accident but was it just he was an angry drunk and just it seemed like he was proud to be engaged to the prettiest girl in town or something and it just probably he was an ang- angry drunk probably a lot you know he's very entitled very powerful and it's just about power and he's used to getting what he wants and yeah I th- they did it as a group you know probably trying to impress his friends almost like look i have the most beautiful girl in town and look at all this power i have over her true i don't know if he meant to kill her i'm guessing if they got married this is how we would have been in their relationship true i mean it's sad everything that happened but in a way she kind of was lucky to not have to go through with that marriage because it probably would have been horrible he would have killed her eventually yeah so she's lying there to die in her story and carlisle shows up to turn her and I thought it was interesting that Edward's like, what were you thinking, Carlisle? Rosalie Hale? And yeah. Carlisle says, I just couldn't let her die. It was too much, too horrible, too much waste. And he says that again. It was too much waste. I couldn't leave her. What was a waste? Like, what about her? Because Edward says people die all the time. Yeah. Young people die all the time. So what? what is it a waste? Is it just because she's beautiful? That's what I think yeah it's too much waste he maybe carla had a thing for rosalie <laughs> not this now too yeah carla has a I thing for know. everybody yeah carla has a little creep <laughs> <laughs> don't say that no i'm joking guys but he did want rosalie to be with edward yeah so i think he thought that like oh edward could do well with this like very beautiful girl but Edward says it's a problem that, like, Rosalie is so well-known and that people are going to be looking for her. Yeah. So I, how was that resolved? Ultimately, people probably were looking for her. And probably must... were until recent years. Yeah, they must have just ran away and... Yeah. I think it's interesting when, not to backtrack, but when Rosalie's talking about the abuse that she faced mm-hmm. at the end of her life, mm-hmm. she says, I remember every detail about that night. I clung to it so hard in the beginning. I thought of nothing else. And so I remember this when... So many um, pleasant memories have faded away completely. I just think it's interesting how even in this new life, Mm -hmm. she's still, like, you can even tell the way she's telling the story, she's in so much pain, that she's still traumatized by something that happened to her as a human. Yeah, like 75 years ago. Yeah, it just shows how deep trauma runs in people's psyche. Mm -hmm. She does talk about how Edward wasn't attracted to her, and her dislike for Bella and she says it's embarrassing you see at first I was mostly jealous because he wanted you and not me Bella's like but you love Emmett and then Rosalie says I don't want Edward that way Bella I never did I love him as a brother but he irritated me from the moment I heard him speak you have to understand though I was so used to people wanting me and Edward wasn't the least bit interested and (laughs) She talks about the Denali clan and says, all those females, Edward never showed the slightest preference. Then he met you. Not that you aren't pretty, Bella. (laughs) (laughs) That triggers Bella's jealousy. Yes. Hardcore. (laughs) All those females. She repeats that line in her head. Rosalie does kind of have a point when she's telling Bella, like, you need to think this through a little bit more. I respect that. I think it it was nice of Rosalie to talk to Bella here. Yeah. It's a good talk. Then Bella's back at school and Jacob shows up and she gets on the back of his motorcycle. I thought it was funny. Mike asks, you want to do something tonight? How could he still sound hopeful? And Bella says, can't. I got a slumber party. Mike says, who are you? Then Jacob shows up. On his yeah. Motorcycle. Run, Bella. She gets on his motorcycle. Now it seems like she's having a sleepover with Jacob. <laughs> Yeah, that looks so suspicious. I mean, already. I mean, think about it. You, let's say you're at school, you're at work, and you know someone is in a relationship, and you see someone pull up on a motorcycle, and they get on the back. I mean, not not to be like, guys and girls can't be friends, but it's very clear to everyone in that parking lot that Jacob wants to be more than friends just from the way he's carrying himself Mm -hmm. and like people talk in this town yeah and it's just crazy to me that she said she had a sleepover and goes off yeah it just looks bad yeah bella i feel like bella's coming off a little bit like the town floozy (laughs) yeah like renee we know that she isn't really doing anything but it doesn't it's not a good look (laughs) 
And she goes off with Jacob and concludes the chapter saying, it felt great to be free. And that ugh, just sounded like an affair. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it doesn't make Edward look good either because it's like, what is she free from? Yeah, exactly. Chapter eight. It's called Temper. Oh, great. <laughs> Bella is so stupid here in this chapter. <laughs> Why? So she's walking hand in hand with Jacob. I know. And she says, without seeming to think about it, he reached out and took my hand. We paced silently across the rocks. I thought of how we must look look walking hand in hand down the beach, like a couple, certainly, and wondered if I should object. But this was the way it had always been with Jacob. No reason to get worked worked up about it now. Like, come on, Bella. I know. (laughs) It's not right. You know how he feels. You know. <laughs> it's just so dumb. Like, she knows he's really hurt and upset about this, and it just makes it worse. I understand, like, what it means, but, like, I, I don't like the term the friend zone because I don't like people being upset thinking that friendship is a consolation and, like, they're entitled yeah. to anything. But in this instance, instance, if Bella wants to be a good friend and, like, really cares about him, she has to let him go. Yeah. And Jacob, obviously, I wrote this in my notes, obviously feels like he is a... Nice guys finish last, friend zoned yeah. guy, and if he felt differently, sure, but it's not sustainable. Nope. On the same page, this is where Jacob tells her that Quill imprint on, imprinted on a two year old named Claire. Oh my god. And gosh. Jacob says he'll just have to be patient for a few decades. Ew. That was so so gross to me. I know. Even though Jacob says it's not like that, like he'll be anything that Claire wants him to be, then why are you saying a few decades? Yeah, why are you saying that? It's like you are expecting it to be romantic and sexual. I was happy at least that Bella described herself as horrified and was upset. And she said, but she's a baby. But yeah, I, I felt the same way. Like he says he can be a protector or a lover or a friend or a brother. And I said... In my notes, seems like it's always supposed to be lover, though. Yeah. And there's a huge difference between lover and brother. So I don't get how the same person could be a brother or could be a lover. Like, yeah. What? No, it doesn't work that way. And and then he says, Quill be the best, kindest big brother any kid ever had. There isn't a toddler on the planet that will be more carefully looked after than the little girl will be. And then when she's older and needs a friend, he'll be more understanding, trustworthy, and reliable than anyone else she knows. And then when she's grown up, they'll be as happy as Emily and Sam. A strange, bitter edge sharpened his tone at the very, very end when he spoke of Sam. Doesn't Claire get a choice here? Bella asked. Of course, but why wouldn't she choose him in the end? He'll be her perfect match, like he was designed for her alone. And I don't like that. Yeah, it's it's like there kind of is no other option than being a lover, even though they set it up like it's not like that. Yeah. Also, doesn't she get t- a chance to have, you know, boyfriends in high school, in college, you yeah. know, meet all these different guys? Like, that's a important part of life i think and yeah and oh gosh if i was a parent of a child like i don't understand how bella is so understanding like comes to be so understanding of that with renesme because it's creepy even if it's if it's not sexual this grown adult should not have a very close connection and bond with a young girl it's just not appropriate that he's not related that he's not related to also, this whole thing is of imprinting is so heteronormative. Oh, yeah. It's, like, not even considered that they could ever imprint on someone of the same sex. No. Sort of changing subject a little bit, but she asks him if he's imprinted, and he says, no, I haven't. And then he says, but I'll never see anyone else, Belle. I only see you, even when I close my eyes and try to see something else. Ask Quill or Embry. It drives him crazy. I'm like, oh my gosh. She says, Jacob, you haven't really seen much of the world. You haven't really seen much of the world, less than me even. And I thought that was kind of a diss. Yeah. <laughs> but it's true, it made though. Me a little it's happy. true. <laughs> and yeah, Jacob professes his love, basically. Yeah, he's. Bella says, maybe I should go home. Yeah, she should. And then he says, no. I thought it was so annoying how jacob brings up the motorcycles and i was like we should go riding and she said i don't think i'm allowed you know because of charlie and edward yeah he says 
I won't tell anyone. Like, uh, we cannot trust you. Yeah, you already <laughs> did. Yeah. <laughs> he, he later apologizes for that, but... Yeah. Oh, too little, too late. Mm-hmm. And then this is when he is kind of asking about her turning into a vampire. Jacob says, well, we still have a few years. Can't we be friends until we're out of time? Meaning, like, when she becomes a vampire in a few years. And she says, years? No, Jake, not years. Weeks is more accurate. And he freaks out and says, you'd be better off dead. I'd rather you were. I wrote, he's a psychopath. That's a (laughs) horrible thing to say. It's horrible. And she's very upset. And she says, maybe I'll get lucky. Maybe I'll get hit by a truck on my way back. And she leaves. She gets on her motorcycle and rides to the Collins house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, one thing I had to say before then is Mm -hmm. Jacob is like, I wish we could go back to how it was before, like when Edward was gone. Oh, yeah, yeah. He says another era, a happy, a happier one, and I think it's weird that he would say that because Bella clearly wasn't happy in that time, and so she says I couldn't agree with him. This was my happy era now, but mm-hmm. I was surprised to realize how many things I missed from my personal dark ages. Blah blah. I don't know. It's like weird that he would say that that's a happier one, but also like that's his reality, and it just yeah. makes you realize that they're both just living in different realities right now, and they, they are, are not aligned whatsoever. I underlined that part actually personal dark ages because it reminded me of the mgmt song little dark age (laughs) and i was like cool i think that's crazy that she can ride back on i didn't like in the movies she just tries the motorcycle once and then she gives up yeah she's good at riding a motorcycle now that's so badass that is pretty badass (laughs) she should ride it around more why does she stop wait would you ever ride a motorcycle i would try it would you? Uh, maybe on the back of somebody. Yeah. On a back road. Yeah. I have no desire to ever drive a motorcycle. I feel like it might be cool, but, but I liked riding my mom's Vespa. Yeah, that was scary. I would get one of those. I don't think I could ever get on the back of that again. Or <laughs> on the front of that again. It's not so bad once you just take your time and go slow. And then you start to be more confident. But I'm not, like, an expert or anything. But anyway, yeah, so she goes to the Collins' house, returning to her sleepover, right? And she goes to Mm -hmm. sleep. But then... She's on the couch. She wakes up, and Edward's there. Yes, and Edward is so flirty here. (laughs) He is. He's so frisky here. So frisky. Yeah, he's very peaceful and not upset or anything. And they start kissing... Oh, my gosh, I have to find this. Page 185, he says says sorry he murmured so softly that his voice is part of the darkness i didn't mean to wake you i tensed waiting for the fury both his and mine but it was only quiet and calm in the darkness of a, his room i could almost taste the sweetness of reunion in the air a separate fragrance from the perfume of his breath the emptiness when we were apart left it left its own bitter aftertaste something i didn't consciously notice until it was removed there was no friction in the space between us. The stillness was peaceful, not like the calm before the tempest, but like a clear night untouched by even the dream of a storm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know why hearing you read that was like really feeling intense for me. <laughs> so Bella, remember she left that voicemail for Edward? She mm-hmm. was so angry. Yeah. She's completely over it. Yes. And he doesn't even care that she snuck off mm-hmm. to the push. It's it's hard for me to even talk about this section because I, like, can't contain myself. <laughs> okay, good. I thought it was just me. <laughs> <laughs> Words will never do it justice. Like, I just want to read the whole thing aloud. I know, should we? I don't know. Can we? I don't know. <laughs> let's, start, let's start on page 186. Oh, my God. His Gosh, hand this curved. is the best part. His hand. <laughs> I feel so conscious that Abby might be listening in the other room, but maybe she's not. <laughs> my cat is right on my lap. He's listening. <laughs> okay. His hand curved around my elbow, moving slowly down my arm, across my ribs, and over my waist, <laughs> tracing along my hip and down my leg, around my knee. He paused there, his hand curling around my calf. He pulled my leg up suddenly, hitching it around his hip. Oh my god. I stopped breathing. This wasn't 
the kind of thing he usually allowed. Despite his cold hands, I felt suddenly warm. His lips moved in the hollow at the base of my throat. Not to bring on the ire prematurely, he whispered, but do you mind telling me what it is about this bed that you object to? Before I could answer, before I could even concentrate enough to make sense of his words, he rolled to the side, pulling me on top of him. Oh my! My face in his hands, angling it up so that his mouth could reach my throat. My breathing was too loud. It was almost embarrassing, but I couldn't quite care enough to be ashamed. Wow. And then the bed, he asked again. I think it's nice. It's unnecessary. I managed to gasp. (laughs) Gasp. That makes it really crazy. (laughs) He pulled my face back to his and my lips shaped themselves around his. Slowly this time, he rolled till he hovered over me. He held himself carefully so that I felt none of his weight, but I could feel the cool marble of his body pressed against mine. My heart was hammering so loudly that it was hard to hear his quiet laughter. That's debatable. He disagreed. This would be difficult on a couch. Oh, He's my so flirty. God. Oh, shit. This is the last line we're g- I'm going to read. Okay. <laughs> Cold as ice, his tongue lightly traced the shape of my lips. And then Bella says, did you change your mind? I asked, I asked breathlessly. Breathlessly. So basically, yeah, she's like, oh, are we having sex right now? Oh, my God. This scene is so hot. But not to put a damper on it, do you think that this is him, like, kind of using sex as a way to get Bella to, like, not be mad about the whole kidnapping thing? Maybe. But he also has forgiven her. Or not even forgiven her. He changed his mind, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. uh, Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. (laughs) Mm. I love when Edward loses his uh, self-control like this. I know. It's crazy. He's, he's always so composed and so controlled, and I, I don't know. I like the idea of him being like more, um, crazy, like more, <laughs> more thirsty for Bella's body than her blood. <sighs> <laughs> so yeah, Bella's really frisky here. She's like, I like danger. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Oh, I wrote Bella's a freak. <laughs> she, Wait, she does something really freaky. She says, you can hold me hostage anytime you want. This is like very Fifty Shades. It is. I can see the connection. Do you think she was not really angry about the idea of being kidnapped? It's just that Edward wasn't there? Or, I don't know, I feel like she would still be angry if it was him that was like, you're staying with me all weekend. I don't know. Um, no, I think Bella actually would be fine with that. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> I, I think that it's oh uh, this is a problematic thing about Bella though I mean maybe it's because she can't see Jacob without Edward but mm-hmm. like it's it's like she has to be with one of the boys <gasps> you're right like, why couldn't she be happy to do a girl's weekend I know she isn't I hate that she never wants to hang out with her girlfriends it hurts me do you think that like she needs that kind of attention like romantic attention so it's like Edward's <laughs> like here oh I want to go see Jacob yeah, maybe. Should we get into her psychology? <laughs> maybe. She she needs she, male attention. It's because of her childhood? Yeah, I mean, she, I don't feel like she doesn't have daddy issues, though. You're right, I know. She's pretty... Actually, she into- does. She kind of does. Does she? She Explain. doesn't call Charlie dad. She calls him Charlie. <gasps> You're right. And, and she didn't in know the him for... Books, she mm-hmm. is really indifferent to him. It's, like, more than the movie. Yeah. She's way more loving to him in the in the movies. <laughs> Bella. <laughs> it is, like... I, I really... I think if Edward was there, she would have been fine. Oh, but I, did, I wrote... I love when Edward says normal guy things. Just because he says it so rarely. So, Bella's really jealous about the females in Denali... And, like, who was into him. And he mentions how Tanya, like, kind of had yeah. a thing for him. But she, he turned her down. He put his lips right to my ear. His cold breath tickled. I prefer brunettes. <laughs> and I thought it's just so funny to hear him say something like that. It is. I, I think it's funny that he says that. But I also feel so bad for any Twilight fans who are strawberry blonde. and I know. Blonde. Because he says, strawberry blonde, not my, not at all my type. Yeah. Guys, if that's your hair color, please don't listen to him. 
<laughs> he was just trying to please Bella. <laughs> well, we don't know. No, I know. We're brunettes. I know, but I just feel bad for all the readers that love Edward, and then they read, like, oh, I wouldn't be attracted to you. <laughs> I know, but it's not our job to make them feel better. I know, you're right, you're right. <laughs> I'm just joshing. Hey, but we're twi- we're all Twilight fans, and I just I just want to to tell them it's okay that you're not Edward's type. <laughs> I actually was going to talk about the growth that Edward shows. Yeah, in this so part. much. He was, as we know, he's very controlling in the beginning, but here he really has learned. On page one ninety, he says, "I decided you were right. My problem before." was more about my prejudice against werewolves than anything else. I'm going to try to be more reasonable and trust your judgment. If you say it's safe, then I'll believe you. She says, wow. Yeah, and then he says, 191, did you make plans to go to La Push again soon? And she says, like, I don't know. And he says, just so that I can make my own plans. I don't want you to feel like you have to hurry back because I'm sitting around waiting for you. So he's really giving, yeah, he's really giving her her space now. Yes, Edward. Thank you. And then he makes kind of a joke, which is, it's always funny when Edward makes a joke because, (laughs) I don't know, (laughs) he can be so serious. But she said, I don't think I'm welcome anymore about LaPush. And he said, did you run over someone's cat? He asked, like, yes, politely. (laughs) I would would have loved to have seen Edward say stuff like that more in the movies. And then Bella tells him about how Jacob said, I'd rather you be dead. And Edward is dead genuinely sympathetic he's not like oh jacob sucks yeah yada, yada, yada. he's like i'm so sorry and then bella says i thought you'd be glad and he said glad over something that hurt you i don't think so <gasps> bella and jacob like this is my thing this is why i'm team edward jacob would never ever say something like that he would be like yeah. blood sucker like he would not have the maturity <laughs> to put bella's feelings first like as we saw earlier Jacob was getting joy just in thinking about how much pain Bella was in when Edward yeah. left, just for his own personal benefit. <sighs> Edward's not like that. Like, all he cares about is that Bella is happy and not whether or not... I mean, to some extent, it is self-centered, like, as everything is, but at the end of the day, like, he'd rather Bella be happy than for True. him to, like, win. And we really see that in... You know, like Breaking Dawn when he says, if you want to have a baby with Jacob, you can. I mean, that's yeah. kind of to the extreme about wanting Bella to be happy. Well, do you think that they would have had to have had sex or that they would have done like I think IVF? they meant have sex. I, that's how I took it. Really? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Because then, I don't know. Why would he say Jacob? Like, wouldn't he just say, like, oh, you could get... Sperm donor? Sperm wouldn't he just donor. say that? Why would Why would he say like? Oh, yeah, that is weird. <laughs> would he say the guy that you kissed. <laughs> yeah, like oh, if you're willing to phone one other person, would it be Jacob? <laughs> what a weird love triangle. That is weird. <laughs> oh, Bella's frisky again on the same page. Well, he before this he said I could quite literally kill him for saying that to you. I want to, which. Yeah, that's more angry, but it was kind of funny to me for some reason. And she said, I guess it's a good thing you've got so much self-control. I could slip. And she said, if you're going to have a lapse of control, I can think of a better place for it. And then, like, starts kissing him and stuff. Just trying to tell him to lose control again. (laughs) And then he says, must I always be the responsible one? But I think what's so refreshing about that is like in stories and in real life all the time it's always the opposite like the guy is always the one who wants to have sex and the girl's not ready and it's not that like bella's pressuring (laughs) she kind of is pressuring edward but it's not like he's vulnerable and yeah uh well i don't know maybe (laughs) he is no i agree with what you were starting to say that i think it's really cool that we have this girl you know, not being ashamed of wanting it. And it's a cool dynamic that he, it's like reversed from, I don't know, conventional yeah. things and books yeah. and TV. But it's not like hard to believe. Like, I'm sure it happens. Like, th- just because someone's a guy doesn't mean he like wants to have sex. And just because someone's a girl, you know, doesn't mean they're they're the yeah one that's like, no. 
I, I do think it's like Edward isn't saying no because he's like mm-hmm. not ready for it, mature, like maturity yeah. wise. It's just because he has his values. <laughs> I imagine if he's like, I don't know, I just <laughs> not ready. <laughs> This is too grown up for me. I don't know. <laughs> well, people have different reasons for not being ready, but yeah. <laughs> like, we haven't known each other that long. That would be interesting. <laughs> Chapter nine is called Target. My first note is that Jacob leaves Bella and he calls and leaves mm-hmm. a voicemail. And Charlie leaves a note. And he's very team Jacob. He says, he said he didn't mean it and then he's sorry. He wants you to call him. Be nice and give him a break. He sounded upset. And Bella says, I didn't expect Charlie to editorialize yeah. the messages. Bella's very clearly mm-hmm. mad at Jacob. And Charlie says, that's not very attractive behavior, Bella. Forgiveness is I know. divine. I thought that was just a really awkward and weird thing to say to your daughter. Yeah, I thought that was kind of jerky of him. He's Why is he guilting her into being friends with Jacob? I don't get it. Yeah, I think it might be just because of his loyalty mm-hmm. to Billy. And, like, wanting Bella to have mm-hmm. other friends. Then, also, we have Bella just, like, doing the laundry <laughs> for Charlie. And I don't love it. the women taking care of the guys. Yeah, we see that a lot. <laughs> but then that's when she notices that her clothing, some of her clothes are missing. And then mm-hmm. Edward realizes someone's been here. And a vampire they don't know has been in the house. See, I would never know if... A vampire has been in my room because I lose things <laughs> all the time. I think I would know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you would know. I thought it was funny when Edward rings the doorbell and Charlie just says, <laughs> door. And then Bella says, don't strain yourself, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice that. What the heck? Yeah. I didn't appreciate that when I read it. She decides to forgive Jacob on page 209. Oh, he's like, Bella. Oh, Bella, I'm so sorry. I swear I didn't mean it. I was just being stupid. I was angry, but that's no excuse. And yeah, I don't know. It's just a bit over the top. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I feel like she's yeah. too forgiving. This is how many times has it been in this book so far where she's forgiving people? Yeah. Left and right. <laughs> yeah. I think to forgive someone is a great thing. I think we should all try to forgive people. But she just does it so quickly and without any care for if this is going to continue you know what I mean I think like a big part of forgiveness is you have to do it at the right time not that you shouldn't make people suffer but like people need to learn a lesson from it and Jacob keeps making these mistakes (laughs) over and over again the thing with the motorcycle I don't think at this point he's even apologized for that yet oh I guess maybe he did last chapter he hasn't learned if you just keep forgiving someone over and over again they're eventually not going to feel bad about hurting you because yeah, they know that you'll just forgive it's them true. again. Edward actually asks to take the phone, which is so weird, and talks to Jacob and basically tells him to come over to smell the vampire scent so they can figure out who it is. Something interesting about this phone call is that we see, hear Edward and he's so polite. <laughs> you can't really hear what Jacob's saying, but just from the description, you can tell that he's all riled up says Jacob's voice rose in pitch and it sounded to me like he was trying to be persuasive and then Edwards has something polite yeah like this part <laughs> Jacob interrupted him then I could hear the buzz of his voice from the receiver whatever he was saying he was more intense than before I tried unsuccessfully to make out the words why is he freaking out he's like meh, 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 meh. yeah yeah <laughs> that's what I yeah, yeah literally <laughs> me too <laughs> And then Edward is so polite. He's like, I'll try to consider it objectively, Edward promised, as objectively as I'm capable of. But maybe I'm also reading it that way because I like Edward. Yeah, it basically just ends with Jacob saying, I'll see you in a few. And yeah, I don't know. He's coming over. So then the next chapter is chapter 10. It's called Scent. Jacob comes over, shirtless. So as we know, Jacob explains why they're always shirtless and it's because their clothes come off when they phase but i didn't know that they actually carry around their jeans in their mouths as they're doing their werewolf stuff and he has a thing around his ankle where he ties things that would be really funny if that was in the movie you just see their jeans in their mouths they should have done that because it it didn't make sense but whatever yeah because like casual twilight fans didn't really get it they just thought it was like a 
a bro thing. Oh, that they didn't wear shirts. No, yeah. I think that people understood that they didn't wear as much clothes because they transform. Yeah. Really? No, I don't think people got. I don't how think do people you know? got that. Because I think p- people talked about how they were shirtless so much that they didn't even. They thought it was for their appearance. Oh, and I not feel like that's people that didn't. There watch was a logistical. It maybe, but I feel like people who watched it but didn't read the books would still get it. Um, maybe. But they didn't. But they didn't explain how they would then have clothes on ever. Like I don't know. Yeah, because then like they'd have a whole mm-hmm. tussle, and then in the next scene they had yeah. shorts again. But I thought that their shorts broke. Yeah, I know. Like combusted. So it doesn't make sense in the movies. Yeah, or. You're right. Do they take off their pants, then transform? (laughs) Oh, they might. I think they actually... Well, no, but they transform. They don't really have control over when they do it, right? Well, maybe now they can control it better. (laughs) Wait, do you think that they just feel themselves getting riled up, and then they just start pulling their shorts down as fast as they can? I don't think that... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like oh no i'm getting upset and then it's almost like you're like about to have diary errors <laughs> no i feel like we're supposed to think time has progressed and now they can control themselves okay, or maybe. or not is there a scene that comes that i forgot about where he like loses control i don't know in that scene they're all together like when they phase back are they all just like naked <laughs> standing in a circle they must be <laughs> or do they We've like go off each other naked <laughs> In a circle. They must. Oh, poor Leah. Oh, my gosh. That must be weird. That is weird. Or maybe they don't all transform next to each other. Transform back, I mean. Yeah, they probably purposely, like, go off into <laughs> yeah, a different part of the woods. Yeah, that must be what they do. Part of the woods. <laughs> That's probably why they can all hear each other's thoughts. It's like, oh, I know that you're going this way. They're saying to each other, like, don't look, don't look. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> um... <laughs> Okay, it's going to be hard for me right now to find the part that I was talking about. I'm just going to read my note, but I can't find the thing to back it up, so I should cut this out. But I wrote, Jacob can never just answer questions simply. He has to be vague and make Bella sound dumb. I can see that. He is kind of condescending to her as if he knows better. Yeah. So Jacob asks about if he kisses, if she kisses Edward. I always kind of like this part. It's funny, but... Also strange. He asks what it's like to have a vampire boyfriend. Yeah, and then I was wondering, do you know, kiss him? I laughed. Yes. He shuddered. <laughs> Ugh. To each their own, I murmured. This is like, you know, he's obviously thinking about kissing Bella. So then he cuts his hand in the kitchen and he's bleeding everywhere. But then he heals super, super quickly. And she goes crazy with bleach, cleaning it because, because she's of Edward. worried. Yeah, Edward will freak out. I don't think that Edward would want to drink Jacob's blood. <laughs> yeah, because then Edward comes back and she forgot to put the knife away, the bloody knife, and it doesn't bother him at yeah, all. Yeah, because it smells bad. <laughs> so that freak out was for nothing, but whatever. Bella gets the news that she got into Dartmouth. Which is crazy. Mm-hmm. I, it's, just, like, it's just too unrealistic that she would get in there. Like, obviously... Edward probably donated money, but, like, I feel like that would be the talk of the school, especially in a small town. That's in every freaking teen book or TV show or movies. They always all go to, like, Ivy League schools. Yeah. And it drives me crazy. I'm like, yeah. not only is it hard to get into, it's so expensive. So even if you're wicked smart, you can't just go. Like, not that many people get to go. And it's in, like, every teen thing someone yeah. going to brown <laughs> and it'll always be characters who never seemed like they were overachievers or yeah particularly smart or like high school musical he gets into juilliard <laughs> he was in one musical <laughs> so true and he didn't even want to go mm-hmm. i don't think he auditioned or anything and i bet gabriella got into an ivy league school i bet <laughs> Let me look it up right now. Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, Gabriella got into University of California, Berkeley, so. That is good. a really good school. It is a really good school. Oh my gosh, page 232. So sad. This is when Edward reveals he got his own motorcycle. Yeah. And Bella kind of turns him down on but it. But you can tell he's embarrassed about it. It's really sweet. It actually is kind of cute and sad. I don't know. Yeah. 
Also, Edward shows a lot of growth because he says, this is something that you do with Jacob. I see that now. So he's, mm-hmm. like, totally accepting. Yeah. And then he says, don't worry about it. Yeah, just very accepting that, like, Bella can have her own hobbies and life outside of him. Yeah, and she keeps trying to apologize, and he's like, no, it's fine. I said not to worry. <laughs> yeah. Not to backtrack, but Bella says something about, like, I didn't know I had permission to ride a motorcycle or something. Mm-hmm. And he says, you don't have to ask my permission, Bella. I'm not your father. Thank heaven mm-hmm. for that. Perhaps you should ask Charlie, though. Wait, no, it's not about the motorcycle. It's about seeing Jacob. Yeah. I'm really proud of him here. I feel like I've heard people criticize him and say, I think in the feminism episode we did, that it would have been more compelling if Edward showed growth, but he definitely does, so I'm, I'm not sure like what the critique is. I know. What the heck? Maybe they didn't read the book. I wish we did get this in the movie, actually, but I know they can't fit everything in. Um, so, some things yeah. have to get cut, but... Maybe that is based off the... Or they just chose not to remember this. Yeah. The next page, oh, this is really cute. Well, he gave Bella a motorcycle jacket, and she tries it on, and she says, Be honest, how hideous do I look? He took another step back and pursed his lips. That bad, huh? I muttered, No, no, Bella, actually. He seemed to be struggling for the right word. You look sexy. (laughs) I laughed out loud. Right. Very sexy, really. (laughs) Edward! Oh my god, I'm dead. <laughs> it's kind of funny. He puts a, then, on a jacket and then steps back and it's like, you look sexy. <laughs> on the next page, Bella says, He sighed and leaned toward me. I turned my face up for a goodbye kiss, but Edward took me by surprise, fastening his arms tightly around me and kissing me with as much enthusiasm as he had in the garage. Before long, I was gasping for air. And that happens right in front of Jacob. It does? Yeah. And they're oh, like, remember like the whole custody gosh. thing? But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that happens in the movie too. Yeah, but it feels better in this scene. I don't know why. <laughs> so chapter 11 is called Legends. And I just want to say, <laughs> my friends, we had a friend group. We called ourselves the Cool Ute Legends for some reason <laughs> named after this. And, yeah. um, but then we called ourselves legends for short. I've heard a lot of people have mixed opinions on this chapter. How do you how do you feel about it? Okay, I feel like when I was younger, I thought this was really boring and hated it. And I was like, oh, I hate that chapter. I still think it's maybe a little slow and there's maybe some details we didn't per se need. But I found myself able to pay attention more and actually think it was interesting as part of the plot so yeah it is 16 pages though of the stories yeah what do you think i don't love it i think it's pretty boring and i struggled to get through it this time around i was thinking like why is that i took a native american literature class several native american literature classes in college and oral storytelling is such a big part of their culture Mm mm-hmm and I just feel like Stephanie Meyer, like, she tries to adapt that in her story, but, like, mm-hmm. I don't think she does a good job at that. Like, it doesn't really read, like, an oral story. She, and, and this goes for even in the flashbacks that she has with Rosalie and Jacob, mm-hmm. there's just a lot of unnecessary details that people don't really include when they're telling a story. Yeah, that's true. And it just drags on, like, she's writing. It doesn't it. sound like someone speaking really yeah it doesn't and so she's writing it like it's prose Mm -hmm. and then when you're then keep going back out of that and billy's wiping the sweat off of his forehead (laughs) or whatever it's just kind of awkward and so before they get into the story the guys are eating tons of hot dogs and it's kind of grossing me out Mm -hmm. uh and bella's staring at kim the girl that jared imprinted on and there's this whole part about she didn't think she was that pretty and then she sees Jared's devotion and then changes her mind about how Kim looks. And it's very weird. <laughs> I didn't like that part because it's like Bella doesn't notice yeah. Kim's beauty until it's in the eyes of... Exactly. A guy, like it's through the male gaze. I know, Bella's a little superficial sometimes. Yeah. Like why do we even have a paragraph about how not pretty she was? And then, oh wait, yeah. actually she is pretty. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's not important. Mm-hmm. And during the stories, Emily's taking notes. Yeah, I didn't get that. I thought it was just interesting, but 
I don't think there's a point. I don't know. She just wanted to document them. Maybe. So then Billy tells... Uh, I actually did a little bit of research about this. Billy tells a long story about the Quilly origins, about Taha Aki. So this is not a real story. I mean, duh, they're not really werewolves, but this whole thing, like there wasn't a guy named Taha Aki. I looked it up and it's weird because there is a real story that she kind of could have used. It's a little bit different, but the real story is about Kwati or Klati who created the Quileute tribe by transforming wolves into people. Like, that's their actual legend. So it's like, yeah. why did you change the name? And, like, I just it's weird. Did she even know that? I mean, she must have, but... I wonder if she thought that it would be more inappropriate to change a real story instead of just making up her own. But I think that's another reason why I don't love this section, is I understand the need to include the legends that mm-hmm. exist in this universe for the yeah. sake of the story but just having these whole 16 pages and then knowing that it's not even real yeah it's, you know a white lady kind of just like changing the legends of a tribe mm-hmm. I, I don't know I just don't I feel like it could have been enjoy just like it. way shorter in the real legend and just been like yeah so that's it and turns out it's true or like I don't know like she didn't need to add to it yeah and there's so many details it's it's like why is she the third wife like what's the significance (laughs) it kind of sounds like someone like a white person trying to write a story that sounds like what a Native American story would sound like to them if that makes sense Mm. interesting yeah and I was wondering like why do we even necessarily need this I mean it's weird because I think it's cool that she has the real tribe in this book and like I never heard of them before and I think that's cool that I learned about it but I was wondering like why does she even have this and like well she just wanted something that relates to the vampires and to Bella's struggle she identifies with the third wife Mm -hmm. um but I'm wondering like was there another way she could have done that or did we even need it you know driving that point again I don't know I think a lot of people take issue with this chapter because she mm-hmm. is changing their legends and like yeah. taking something that's like kind of sacred to the culture and then making it fit into her own plot and story. Mm-hmm. Um, and the third wife is <laughs> a lot of what we've been seeing like really submissive and yeah, uh, just kills herself so that Taha Aki can live, I think, and... Um, I did like how Bella said, I wish they remembered her name. Cause I was like, yeah, yeah. The heck, I'm glad someone pointed that out. <sighs> yeah. Really complicated chapter and yeah, not my favorite. I don't think a lot of people love this chapter. Mm-hmm. It seems like Bella falls asleep. She does. Right after it. <laughs> yeah. Because the next, like the story's over and then the next thing she knows she's being carried by Jacob. Mm-hmm. She's waking up, which is kind of rude. I know. Did she miss other stories? I have a note here that says Jacob maturing. I don't know what that's about. Oh, he called Edward actually. Oh yeah, to pick her up. Oh yeah, that that's was kind of nice. mature. Yeah, yeah. And Bella wakes up in Edward's bed. No, no, no. Her, be- <laughs> her bed, right? <laughs> but Edward's there, and he's reading Wuthering Heights. Um, he relates to the passage that's on page two sixty six, I guess. Yeah, I didn't really get it because I don't know anything about the story. <laughs> I read the story, but I I don't know. I had to reread this a few times. Like, Bella really thinks it's weird that he related to it. I think the character is basically just saying, like, I wouldn't, even though I hate him, the other guy, I wouldn't kill him because it would hurt her. Yeah. Um, Stephanie Meyer always does this. Like, we just saw this with the legends, with the magnets, with this. Like, she's just trying to remind us, like, this is how they feel. Yeah, that's We're so like, true. Okay, we get it. And, like, Edward has <laughs> explicitly told us that. I know. Do we really need a part of Wuthering Heights to remind us? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's before she wakes up, she has a dream of Rosalie killing Billy Black. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so random but i thought it's funny it's like two of our least favorite characters in the whole series <laughs> yeah it'd be hard to root for either of them <laughs> i know who would you probably rosalie because <laughs> billy's just 
He's a meddler. Uh, is, is he a good friend to Charlie? I think he's a fine friend to Charlie, but he should know not to drag his friend into it. And I don't know, why is he even trying to be part of his son's love life? Yeah, it's so disgusting. <laughs> but wait, do you think it's kind of unfair that like Billy and Harry Clearwater never filled in Charlie on all these things about his the oh. world that he exists in. I mean, I, I don't think so. I think it's okay. I would feel left out. Yeah, I could see that. But he's not part of it, really. Like, they're friends, but he's not Yeah. in the tribe. Like, it's not really his business. I don't know. <laughs> but do you think that knowing what they know about Bella, that they should have told him? <gasps> I don't know. Like, they know all these things about his daughter. And as his friend, do you think that they should have let him know? Maybe, actually, yeah. When her life is in danger at times. Like, it is kind of crazy. Like, they know that she's with a vampire, and they haven't told Charlie. Yeah. That is kind of nuts. Especially when Bella has disappeared, I think, like, four times throughout the series. <laughs> not that I want that, though, per se. Like, I yeah. want Bella to not be able to see Edward and this whole love story is over. But I mean, I understand being secretive about this the legends but mm -hmm. it's a little weird that they they wouldn't feel more responsibility I, but it's funny that they don't do that but then jacob ends up doing it true i know then charlie does know that his friends lied to him this whole time yeah i was gonna say do the Volta voltori know that there are these wolf people who know about vampires in oh, the pacific northwest question. like do they care yeah you would think that the voltari would take out the tribe weird they weird must thing. know i don't know they yeah. meet them kind of later yeah <laughs> next chapter is chapter 12 it's called time bella didn't realize that it was june 4th which is my birthday <laughs> <laughs> i thought this was kind of dumb of bella because even if she's so preoccupied with her life when you're a senior about to graduate high school you know yeah, you, you know when it. school ends. Yeah, you feel it every day. Everybody's talking about it. And you have all these senior activities and stuff that you have to do. Yeah. She didn't realize that graduation is in one week. That's insane. Which she's determined to be turned into a vampire right after graduation. So basically that means she forgot that she was going to turn into a vampire next week. <laughs> That's crazy. Hard to believe. And she suddenly is freaking out. Yeah, on page 269, she says, I knew exactly what I wanted, but I was suddenly terrified of getting it. She's very clearly not ready. Not as mm -hmm. much as she thinks she is. No, yeah, she's getting really scared, and she's just kind of in a daze not talking for a really long time. Bella gets Alice and Edward a concert tickets for graduation. Mm -hmm. And one of our listeners one time told us what those concert tickets were, but I forget what they are. How do they know? I don't, it's like because Stephanie gave an interview one time and she said that the reason she didn't say what they were is because she wanted it to be very timeless, which I think that she should have included it in the book because you can't change the time period that it was written in and no matter what, things are going to date themselves. Yeah, but I kind of agree. Like, I think it's weird when pro pop culture and brands are in books. Like, it, yeah. I think it sometimes is okay but especially if something really doesn't age well and you're like what is that like it really takes me out of it like I've read things from the 20s and stuff and they're referencing all these things and I'm like I have no idea what they're talking about and I just wish that they didn't say like the movie name or I don't know like yeah, I remember even um books from like middle school would always talk about like glee and stuff but I think it's kind of weird it's like unnatural in a conversation that you'd be like that's right, the concert tickets in Tacoma. I saw an ad in a paper last week, and I thought it would be something you'd like. It's like, in reality, you would say, oh, the John Mayer concert. True. Yeah, you would say it. That's true. It's obviously not John Mayer, though. I think, actually, yeah, I think some things are okay, but sometimes when there's just too many references to food brands and all these things, like, it just gets weird yeah. to me it feels like product placement or something but yeah i think you're right like people would say the concert yeah 
and bond over specific bands that they like. Whoever told us that, please remind us. I thought this was interesting. Edward is being vulnerable in this scene. Uh, page 276, when they're talking about why Bella doesn't want to marry him. Mm-hmm. And he feels kind of insecure about that. Yeah. And Bella's explaining her reasoning that it's just not something that people her age do and she'd be kind of embarrassed about it. And then Edward says, it's not that you were more eager for immortality itself than for just me. So he was just kind of concerned that like maybe Bella cared more about becoming a vampire than being with him forever. And then Edward explains where he's coming from, about how he comes from a different time. And I thought it was weird how he said that he really wasn't interested in girls when he was 17 back in the day. But he was more interested in being a soldier. Mm -hmm. Just like kind of came out of nowhere i didn't really remember that about his character <laughs> i remember that but yeah it doesn't seem like him anymore yeah he, he said i so different yeah he said i thought of nothing but the idealized glory of the war that they were selling prospective draftees then but if i had just found i was going to say if i just found someone but that won't do if i had found you there isn't doubt in my mind how i would have proceeded i was that boy who would have as soon as i was discovered I discovered that you were what I was looking for, gotten down on one knee, and endeavored to secure your hand. Stephanie Meyer really likes, like, an old-fashioned guy. Like, she really yeah. likes the idea of, like, a chivalrous soldier who sweeps a woman <laughs> off her feet. I was going to say, then she goes home, and the newspaper's there talking about Seattle and how many people have died yeah. here recently, like, for mysterious murders, which are actually vampires and it's really bad it's like terrible it's, oh my god it said there's 39 homicides i feel like this is almost too much because this would be like national news yeah people would be talking about it all over yeah like that all of a sudden so many people are getting murdered yeah but it's kind of just like a thing in the background and i feel like for somewhere so close to seattle it would be like something everyone was talking about so the coins are all standing around and I think it's interesting how they're all sharing their ideas of what they think it is. And <laughs> they're all speaking aloud, but Jasper is the only one who's just speaking things in his head to Edward, mm -hmm. which I think shows he's, he's like, very shy. Yeah. Actually, on, I'm just skipping ahead a little bit, but on 285, Jasper just seemed really shy to me. And I don't know. And then later he's talking about his power and how he feels people's emotions and how upset it makes him and stuff. And I was thinking like, wow, Jasper is actually like shy and sensitive. And that never really came across to me in the movies or anything. Mm hmm. That's yeah. So sweet. Yeah. He seems kind of tough in the movie, especially once we get into his backstory. Mm hmm. But he's, what do they call that? An empath? Yeah, he definitely is an empath. Bella says, Jasper didn't seem to enjoy the spotlight. He hesitated, reading every face in the circle, for everyone had moved in, in to hear what he would say, and then his eyes paused on my face. I thought it was interesting that Alice says she can't see anything, and Bella says, can that happen? And Edward says, who knows? No one's ever done a study, but I really doubt it. These things tend to intensify over time. And then Bella says, so what's wrong? And he says, self-fulfilling self prophecy, I think. We keep waiting for Alice to see something so we can go. And she doesn't see anything because we won't go until she does. So she can't see us there. So they might just have to go after these vampires without a plan from Alice. Yeah. Which is how normal people yeah. do things. <laughs> but... <laughs> If you could choose between reading minds or seeing the future, which would you choose? <gasps> That's actually tough. Mm. I don't think I'd want either, to be honest. I think I would used to say yes, I would want that, but now I, I don't know. I feel like that would actually make life worse. Yeah. I feel like seeing the future, too, would be really stressful and scary and yeah, make you really anxious all the time, probably. Yeah. I mean, Raven always got into trouble. Yeah. Because she would always see a glimpse of something, and then it was, like, completely out of context. Oh, now I want to watch That's So Raven. <laughs> no, but I think it would be even more serious than that. Like, if you... I feel like you'd be really scared to do anything, because when you start doing things, you probably get a vision. And yeah, then exactly. what if it's 
something not ideal. I also think it would just make life less exciting. Yeah. And then reading Minds, God, that'd be horrible. I know. I, I would not want to read Minds. I wouldn't want to know. Everyone shit-talking me in their head. Yeah, and <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to know just, like, the personal details of someone's inner mind. I would like to see it for a second, maybe. I, I've always, like, people close to me have always been really curious what their mind was like. Yeah. But all the time, my, I don't know, I think, I think I'm too sensitive for that. That'd be disgusting. <laughs> so the chapter kind of ends. Jasper's about to tell Bella his backstory. Not not just to tell us the backstory, but because it relates, because they think this is a newborn army, and he has experience with newborn armies, and he's going to tell us why. And he shows yeah. Bella all his bite mark scars. So chapter 13 is called Newborn. And this is the final chapter for this episode. Sad. So this is <laughs> Jasper's backstory. Yeah. How did you feel about this chapter? I I actually liked it. How did you feel about it? <laughs> I didn't like it as much as Rosalie's backstory. Oh. Yeah, actually, I don't know. I really enjoyed it for some reason. <laughs> again? No, again, I felt like there's a lot of unnecessary details that people don't include when they're telling a story. Mm. Things are always like that in books, though. Yeah. Especially books where they're supposed to be a diary or something, and then they get into the dialogue, and it's just unrealistic. Yeah. I feel like that always happens. So Jasper tells this whole story about, this isn't in the movie, someone named Benito who created a newborn army in Mexico, and there were newborn battles over territory. And he said that human history blames like diseases for population slumps. I don't understand that. I don't know. <laughs> I guess we're, I guess it's supposed to be like when a lot of people died, people thought it was because they were dying of a disease or something. But but wouldn't they know that it, people were dying of diseases because you would see like their bodies? Probably. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they just think like a lot of people did die of the plague, but then some people died of this, but then when they like just counted all the people that died that year, yeah. it got mixed in with it. I don't know. Yeah, I, maybe. And then they think, I don't know. I don't think they had great records back then, maybe. Yeah, that's true. How specific the numbers. That's true. I thought it's interesting when Jasper was talking about the Voltori, and he talked about them with much more respect than people see them. Yeah, with admiration, kind of. Yeah, he says, It's the Voltori that keep them in check. They are the only ones the Southern Covens fear. If not for the Voltori, the rest of us would be quickly exposed. I frowned at the way he pronounced the name, with respect, almost gratitude. The idea of Voltori as the good guys in any sense would be hard to accept, which is interesting. I think mm -hmm. we might do an episode on the Voltori. We have had a listener who really opened our eyes to just, like, all the multi-dimensions of the Voltori, and yeah. they're such interesting bad guys because they're both bad and good, and a lot of their evils are disguised as goodness, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I agree with what Jasper's saying. Like, somebody has to enforce the laws. Before Jasper tells the story of Benito, mm -hmm. I know we talked before about, like, him being in the Confederate Army and how do we feel about it. Yeah. And you mentioned, oh, historically, like, being in the Confederate Army, like, it didn't always mean... It wasn't always, like, just about slavery for people who joined it and, like, just wanted to be soldiers. Mm -hmm. But I kind of wish... Jasper said something like that here. Like, I wish he... Because he kind of talks about being in the Confederate Army. He talks about how much he wanted to enlist, and he changed his... He faked his age just to join, and then he joined up through the ranks, and he talks about it, like, with so much pride. And yeah. I don't really like that. Like, I wish that he said, you know, I really want to be a soldier. And just at least one sentence of looking back, mm -hmm. I wasn't loyal to the cause. Yeah, maybe just... If he just said one thing... And it has been a really long time. Like, he's lived a long life so he's had time to think about this it's not like he, we're still then when yeah. he's just like i don't know a farm boy or something who thinks the north is being aggressive or something he's had time to learn so <laughs> yeah so but it's weird that he hasn't said anything especially since he's talking to someone from the 21st century he should be like don't worry slavery was wrong yeah so jasper tells the story how he was working for that woman Maria and killing a ton of people and he met his friend Peter and Charlotte and they're still his friends to this day. But he talks about like he left the wars and everything, he left that Maria to be with them but that he still felt depressed 
and it was making me so sad. Yeah. I forgot about that. Was Maria his lover? It didn't seem clear to me in the book, but in the movie they made it so. I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting that he's had another vampire partner. That is. Jasper. Because in, in this world it seems like they mate and then they're together forever. I know. But you would think some would be promiscuous. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Because they're so attractive. I don't know. Um. He also says, or someone had clearly Mexican features, but oh, yeah. porcelain skin. Which I was like, I don't know what Mexican features are. The weird issue of, like, everyone's white in this story. True. <laughs> um, which I don't love. We love Twilight, but there's always stuff like this. Yeah. Which is just, like, kind of uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I did say before, and I'll say again, like, when I first read this, I didn't think anything of these things, so I feel like I, I can't really, like, it is bad, but also, like, I was in that same mindset back then, and so I was also in the wrong, and, like, Stephanie Meyer, I feel like she should have known better, but it's easier to say in the future. Yeah, I mean, I can understand where she's coming from, because stereotypically vampires are pale that's something that kind of like sets the Collins apart is they're just like strikingly pale yeah but at the same time Stephanie tried to make these vampires very different from how we've perceived them in yeah. stories before so it would have been really interesting actually if they weren't pale and that was another myth and that vampires come in all different shades true yeah, because her vampires, they don't have fangs. They don't burn in the sun. Like, she made a lot of changes, so it's weird that yeah. she kept that one. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. I just felt very bad for Jasper. He was like, the depression the depression got worse, and I wandered away from Peter and Charlotte. And he's just really sad because he feels everyone's emotions, and it's just been wearing on him a lot. While he kills people, I never really thought of that. Like, while he's killing someone, he feels that their their fear that they're about to die back when he used to kill humans and drink from them and yeah he almost like had to become a vegetarian i think although i wonder if he can feel the animals um oh maybe (laughs) getting scared i don't know i guess he can carlisle can steal some more blood from the hospital (laughs) anonymous blood Ah! it's weird to think about i would donate my blood for them (laughs) Oh, I would say that I would, but I'm scared of donating blood. Yeah. I'm really squeamish about that kind of stuff. For Edward? You wouldn't do it for Edward? I would let him drink out of me directly, but I don't want to donate blood. Yeah, that would be attractive. (laughs) Oh, my God. That would be hot. As as long as he stopped. (laughs) That's a risk. I don't know. That's that's I know. Yeah, but I always say this. I wish in this universe a frenzy didn't start making it impossible to stop. Yeah, but that's the the dangerous thing about it. Okay, then no, I'm not going to do it because I don't like seeing my blood in a tube. I hate veins. I'm not going to do it. So you would rather Edward drink from you directly than to donate your blood to a dying person? No, I was talking about donating it to... I thought you were saying we're donating it to Edward. Yeah. But that's not to a random person. Yeah, but, okay, so, never mind. Yeah, but so, you would rather risk your well, life Well, Edward doesn't having... exist. That doesn't mean I would never donate blood to save someone's life. I'm just saying, in this situation. <laughs> so, yeah. if I was dating him and he was like, will you donate blood for me? I would say, um, sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> but if someone needed my blood, sure I would, but... I feel like you don't have good enough iron levels to donate blood. Maybe not. <laughs> I I don't mind donating blood. I think everyone, if you are comfortable with it, I think it's a good thing to do. Love vampires, but I hate everything medical and like my veins, they really scare me and I just don't like it. I got blood taken today. Yeah, I hate, uh, hate that. Well, I thought it was really cute that 
Alice was waiting for Jasper in a diner in Philadelphia. That's so cute to me. Yeah. And that she had had visions of the Collins before she met them and, like, went to find them. Yeah, that's sweet. And I thought it was so cute. She says, so we went to find them. Scared the hell out of them, too, Edward said, rolling his eyes at Jasper before turning to, to explain. Emmett and I were away hunting. Jasper shows up, covered in battle scars, towing this little freak, he nudged Alice playfully, who <laughs> greets them all by name, knows everything about them, and wants to know which room she can move into. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but what was the decision that, like, made her see the Collins? I don't know. This sometime, Sometimes it seems like she just sees random things. Yeah, I don't get it. Unless she saw herself deciding to live with these people or something, and then... But how would they come up into her vision anyway? I don't know. Was she like, what is my future? What is my future? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how it works, but I still think it's cute. That is cute. Where do I... Where's my room? <laughs> yeah, but then I was wondering, like, I don't get why Alice didn't see Victoria deciding to build the army. Yeah. They're, they they can't see. They don't know who's doing the army. They're like, we, what's going on? It was Victoria's decision, though, to start this through Riley. So Yeah, why doesn't she see Victoria talking to Riley about it? I don't know. It doesn't really make sense. She's watching too many things or something. I don't know. Yeah. And it slipped past her. <laughs> Sounds like she's on the internet and has too many windows yeah. open or something. <laughs> I know that we still have to do our commentary on the commentary, but mm -hmm. it's so funny in the Eclipse commentary when they're uh, Robert Pattinson is joking about how they're all standing around being like, what is it? <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> like, we only have two enemies. Is it the Voltori? No, it's not them. Oh, the Voltori? No, it can't be her too. Who else is it? Like, <laughs> I know. It's just, like, so obvious. Like, it has to be one of them. And they're just, like... And then they both show up. Yeah. They actually call the Denali clan to ask for help with taking down this army in Seattle. And they say no. Because Irina has a grudge against the wolves for killing Laurent. They're not the best. <laughs> they're not all those females yeah all those females <laughs> <laughs> these are all this trouble and breaking down part two or breaking down yeah i thought i meant to say earlier that when bella brings up the denali women to edward he acts really weird this yeah. was chapters ago, but he kind of doesn't answer her question and is, like, avoiding it, which makes it seem suspicious, like it's his ex, Tanya. But, no, he's just like, oh, yeah, she was interested, but I wasn't. Yeah. He makes a big deal out of it, but. I would think that, like, it would be very hard for Edward to be interested in anybody when he can read their mind because it takes away all of the, like we're saying, love is kind of a game, and, like, it takes away the mystery and excitement of, like, ooh, do they like me back? What are yeah. you thinking right now? True. Some of the best things about having a relationship, and like even a long one, is that you never know what, you never truly know who someone is. Like you never really know what's on the inside because you can't read their mind. So it's like always trying to get to know and figure it out, but you never really will. So it's, yeah. it's fun. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's fun to keep learning new things about someone. If you yeah. don't know everything about them, that's so boring. Yeah. So that's kind of weird to me sometimes, though. It makes me a little bit sad when I realize this because I'm like, is that kind of the only reason Edward likes Bella? Like, if there were other, if there was another girl out there who he couldn't read her thoughts, would he have fallen for her too? I do this to everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember when he said that? <laughs> All a lie. When you live this long, you have to have these little <laughs> Just plays. games. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so the chapter kind of ends there. The, the Collins are planning on taking on this newborn army, and Bella's kind of wondering at the end of the chapter who's going to die. Yeah. Spoiler alert, no one does. Mel! <laughs> Please. Yeah, the last sentence is, I looked around the room at their faces. Jasper, Alice, Emmett, Rose, Esme, Carlisle, Edward, the faces of my family. So next time we'll discuss the second half of the book. What happens? Does anyone die? We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs>
what happens with the love triangle yeah who does she choose yeah who does she choose and let us know your thoughts on eclipse and what we've said so far i was gonna say that real quickly our listener chris Mm -hmm. he reached out to us and he said he doesn't know if it's a rumor but he heard that lionsgate might be opening a theme park in china oh yes it's true have oh it's true yeah i got article i get twilight emails like google alert sent to my email and i got some on that weeks ago actually (laughs) oh my god so lionsgate is gonna have a theme park in china that has twilight rides and attractions yeah and the hunger games oh my god i know that is so cool crazy why wouldn't they do that here i don't know hopefully they will our listener regina sent us a bunch of thoughts on our past episodes but she also said something about eclipse which relates to today's episode she said i reread the books recently and i remember jake being a big jerk for 90 percent of it i don't remember feeling that way in earlier reads it may have been my frame of mind at the time well thank you kelly for joining us today (laughs) thank you mel (laughs) for speaking with me yeah (laughs) come back anytime If you've made it this far, tell us if you would rather date Phil or Billy Black. Nobody even knows what Phil looks like (laughs) or how he acts. He looks like Channing Tatum in 10 years. I don't know, man. Okay, Phil Phil or Mr. Molina? (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's the prize for listening this (laughs) far. These like D list characters. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. Uh, we love you. We love doing this podcast and so grateful for all of you guys. Yeah, thank you. See you in two weeks. Bye. Bye. You can contact us at anotherbiteoftwilight at gmail.com or find us on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram at anotherbiteoftwilight. The music is by Traces. See you next time.